Hey, it's the Bennington Show. I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. And I'm Ron Bennington. Hmm. Gail, from what I understand, you got a Gail Meets Girls up right now. I do. Brand new episode with Karen Feehan and Micah Fox, who both uh, do the Shame On podcast. Uh, so that's available now. You can download it at the Interrobang, or you can download and subscribe on iTunes. There's a couple of vicious young ladies. They like to bring people on and shame them. Yes, they like to. They like to shame. Well, you I know, can understand why you would want to do that podcast, but I don't know why you would want a guest on that podcast. I have no idea. And in fact, I I listened to one where uh, their guest was very confused and thought like she was going to be in on some shaming, like she was going to no. shame some stuff, and she was like, "Oh, it's about me." Yeah, because they're like demolition. Like, they'll take yes. you into the corner and they just keep working you over. Oh, uh, we have a guest today. He's a goiter. And uh, for the next hour, we're going to attack him for that. This was the first time on the on the podcast, I would have to say, uh, I would remind everyone, like, these opinions are their own. These oh, yeah. are my guests. I had to do it twice. <laughs> well, that's, uh, you know, there's all different ways to do comedy. <laughs> Uh, Chris, they were on your, uh, your network, right? Guess. Yeah, GuessDigitalNetwork.com, yes. What happened there? Uh, there, there was some contract negotiations and they didn't, uh, they didn't see eye to eye with Mr. Gomez and Sutton. And then they were, they left. I don't know about that. That's all, that's what I heard. That's my inside skinny. I'll just say this to Mr. Gomez as you refer to him. You don't sign a contract with your dick. <laughs> Hey, I'm doing a uh, benefit tomorrow night at the stand. Listen to this uh, lineup. And this is for, uh, I think it's kids with cancer of some kind. Um, but for St. Baldrick's is the name of it. Listen, listen to this lineup. Uh, Tim Dillon, Mark Norman, Dan Soder, Annie Lieberman, Sherrod Small. Ooh. Ooh, very nice. And hopefully if this works out and people come out to it, there will be no kids with cancer as of Wednesday. I think if anyone can do it, it's you guys. That's a dream team. I got to get a lab coat for myself. <laughs> um, But it's going to be uh, very, very uh, fun. And, you know, it all goes to a worthy cause. So Tim Dillon, myself, Mark Norman. Dan Soder, who does nothing but give, Annie Lieberman, and Sherrod Small. That's a very, very funny show. That's awesome. That's so great. Tuesday at the stand. Come out if you can. Bring your friends along, and then they'll like you after. They're like, man, you know a lot of funny people. And you're like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I do know a lot of funny people. And they help kids. They uh, help kids a lot. Now, uh, Chris, did you watch uh, The Preakness? I did not watch the Preakness. I slept through it. <laughs> did you get the email from Saratoga Chick who picked the Preakness? No! And so you did not bet it. No, I did it. Uh, it was, um, is it cloud computer? Com Com cloud computing. Cloud computing. I'm watching and uh, cloud computing is just coming on at the end, literally wins by a nose. Chick had sent it, and then he also sent things, I hope you, you bet it after the fact. I didn't bet. I, I wasn't paying it. I get so many emails from Saratoga Chick. Yes, I hear that from comedians who say, I'm waiting to hear back from Chris. Oh, God, I can't believe I missed the fucking pick. Uh, Chris? Yeah. Somebody on this show did not miss that pick. Gail Bennington! Oh, my shit! I listened to the chick, and it fucking worked out. I mean, I was freaking out. I mean, I I always bet, um, but because I got the little tip, I was like, I'll put a little extra than I usually do. Like, normally I'm doing, like, five, ten dollar bets. Yeah. It fucking pays off. It was the most exciting race anyway. Well, it, like, was it was a really a, great race. It was such a good race. And me, my boyfriend... And my dog are jumping on the couch. My dog is barking like crazy. We're screaming, throwing fucking shit up into the air. It was nuts. How much did it come in for? I won $700. $700. Seven oh. beans. Which actually really worked out because it split between two bets. Yeah. So my first bet was just like... 
uh, two to win, like cl- cloud computing to right. win. And that came in at just under 600. And yeah. you have to claim 600 and over. So I basically, I got to make 700 without having to go to that IRS because it's like <laughs> over 600 on yeah. a ticket, then you have to go to the IRS. So the other money you got from what? That was an exacta bet with yeah. like that horse and the second horse, which we, we picked as which well. Which was the favorite. Yes. Or a favorite, he, yeah. He like, took the favorite in a long shot. Yeah. Which is a smart little way of uh, jumping into that. Chrissy, you didn't do any of this. I didn't. T- I, I faded. I didn't touch anything there. I didn't touch. Didn't make one fucking. Ball. I can't believe <laughs> and it. I had the fucking winner, <laughs> motherfuck. And immediately I'm thinking, I hope Chris saw this email because I mean we were freaking out. First of all, the chick is a genius. How yeah. does he know? How did he know? The and chick he is was, never wrong. He was fucking what? confident as shit. Dude. Yeah. Like he, I believe his phrase was. Pound number two horse with both fists. Like, he was, like, yes. seriously. So he was saying I, bet I, the farm. I forwarded to Gail, and I said, you want to bet this? First of all, he was telling me that I was supposed to cover Gail. And then she's like, no, I got it. I want to do this because she likes she likes the juice of knowing she can yeah. lose money. <laughs> <laughs> and, exciting. Uh, so, like, five seconds after the race. First of all, the race was really exciting to begin with. I mean, that horse came on part of a champion. He didn't even run in the Derby, right? No, I don't believe he did. I don't remember that he ran in the No, I'm sure that he didn't. Um, But, yeah, it was like, you know, I think he came out of the gate. He was, like, kind of holding his own at, like, maybe fourth for a little while. And then it was, like, just at the end stretch there. And it was just, like, he was just slowly inching. And we were going... Is he fucking doing it? Like, it was just like, it was fucking nuts. I do not know how the chick did it. How did he do it? He knows he keeps his, uh, I mean, this is basically his second job. Uh, he's got the eye. He's got the ear to the ground. I mean, he can smell a winner. You know what I mean? He feels it in his bones. Chris, this just makes me sad because you could have used this one. I could have used it. Yeah. I could have, I could have, I could have. But it would have been nice. You can use that to make purchases. <laughs> Whether it's t- like. tobacco, <laughs> yeah. alcohol, so firearms, <laughs> everything that they worry about. Everything. I'm like, here's the weird thing. So when I, when I first started this show, me and Chris would be talking horse racing. We'd You're both gambling like, buddies. Yeah. And we would talk, oh, okay, you watching the race. Then last year, just be- before the Triple Crown, he had like completely dropped off horse racing. And I was like, how do you drop off a year of the Triple Crown? That's really strange. And now this, Chris. Now we get a hot tip, and you don't even pick it? I've taken tips before, and they usually don't work out. And I, I just saw so I, I felt burned, and I didn't, fucking, I didn't fucking believe in Chick. I feel like a fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, my God, Chris. I, I can't believe I could have used that cash. <laughs> Yeah, you can use that to make purchases. Yeah, like anything you want, like Chris. Any bills you could have paid. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, you never really able to do that. Some of your Tinder dates, you could have taken them. Yeah. Maybe even got a table instead of bellying up to the bar. Oh, that would have been nice. Bar's fine for us. Maybe nice. the lady will have an appetizer tonight. You haven't been into the Tinder world in a while. No, I, um, I actually got a couple updates. One that made me feel horrible. And maybe kind of, uh, back off a little bit. And Great one part. was just, um, I, I remember the first girl I told you about that I saw the first woman I met on Tinder and slept with, like around Christmas. The girl with the she good hair. She was really cute. Yeah. With good hair. Yeah. I remember. I her. was, um, near her, in her neighborhood drinking at a bar and outside, I'm outside the bar smoking a cigarette and I see her walking down the block and I make eye contact with her and I open my mouth to say, Hey, what's up? And then she just walked right by me and ignored me. She hates Maybe me. she didn't remember you. I don't know. I'm pretty memorable, I would say. <laughs> yeah, you are. I wouldn't forget you. Good or bad, I'm pretty memorable. And then, um, <laughs> remember the girl that I uh, met in the hotel room? Uh, the insane girl that got out of the nut hut for a couple minutes? Yeah, the crazy Albanian girl. Um, yeah. So I thought I just... Well, by the way, this is the first I heard she was Albanian. Yeah, she's Albanian. <laughs> um, she's, uh, yeah. And uh, so I um, tried to reach back out to her. Oh, God. Turns out she's in rehab for a year. I'm sure she is. Yes, and you're all part of it. I, I, and, I part felt, of it. and I felt I was part of that rehab fucking Yes. Game. Self-destruction. Yeah. That's what it is. 
feel pretty terrible about myself. Chris, this is how you spend your weekend when you could have been making that paper. You could have been making coins. I could have banked up? Yes. Oh, God. Just a not good all around. Really dropping the ball. Why did you reach back out to her? I don't know. I was a little lit up. <laughs> hey, uh, did you ever get back with Lobster Girl? She texted me on Sunday apologizing and asking mm. if I can make uh, if she can make it up and go out this week. Yeah, I hope you said no. Uh, I said we'll see. So, whoa, shit. Like well, no, I'm busy. Hey, I'm, no, it's just this week. I'm a little busy. Mm. What about taking her to a nice benefit for kids with cancer? That's nice. That's classy. Maybe. I was thinking this weekend's a holiday weekend in the city, so everything's going to be kind of empty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that would be a nice time to go somewhere nicer. <laughs> to where? New York? Yeah. <laughs> everything, She's like, I want to give you a tour to the city. City in which you live. Everything's going to be empty. All the restaurants are going to be easy to get into. All the restaurants are easy to get into anyway. Yeah, I don't go anywhere that you need a reservation, so I don't know why I've been looking forward to this weekend like it's a big deal. The lobster bone ain't an open table? No, dude, lobster bone's probably going to be crowded on Memorial Day weekend. Just, where are you thinking about taking her? The to lobster the fucking bones. zoo, Rock? <laughs> <laughs> Take you to the zoo. <laughs> dude, this fucking kid, he sent in a, a story for the iBang that freaked me out. There's a, uh, a family... I no, you like sea lions, right? Everybody yeah. likes sea lions. Yeah. Which, by the way, I never know really what the difference between a sea lion and a seal is. But you know how, like, when you're in San Francisco and they're in the water in front yeah, and they great. come up on the wharf. It's I'm, very cool. Looking. I don't know where this takes place. It looks so, like somewhere different. Go ahead and hit it. So this is a cute sea lion. Uh-huh. All the people are gathered around. The sea lion, when they stick their face out, I mean, it looks so much like a dog. It does. And it came up right to that little girl. And it's so cute. It looks like uh, it wants to bounce a ball on its little <laughs> nose. And the little girl loves it. Why wouldn't she? And she's looking over. And the sea, sea lion comes out of the water, grabs her, and pulls her in the water oh like Jaws. Holy shit. That thing was so fast. It, it was like so it was- fast and so powerful. Now, here's it. Th- now, go back and do it again. Watch. Holy shit. Watch how it sucks her down. But see if you can catch even the look on her face. Oh! As it yanks her into the water Whoa. so fast. Now, watch your dad now jumping in, or a dad or a grandfather. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Could you go slower? You got to dive in, dude. You don't jump. You dive. And you're, pound, you're punching fucking sea lion once you hit that. It's you in an Aquaman fight against the sea lion. Holy shit. I cannot believe how scary that is. I would not have thought that would ever happen. By the way, Vito's joke was that he wrote, this is why they call them sea lions and not sea puppies. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. I'm at a fucking coffee shop. He sends it in. I take a look at it. I go from horror to laughter. And people are saying, what are you laughing? I go, sea lion pulled a little girl. And then says, even before we put it up, I'm just showing people around the this fucking coffee shop. Like, look at this. You like sea lions, right? Watch. Watch how cute the sea lion is. And then making people scream. And then other people going like this. Hey, what was all this screaming about? And I turn around and go, you like sea lions, right? (laughs) I was like the fucking king of this joint. (laughs) Dude, that I cannot believe that it would be. First of all, I had no idea they could move with that kind of speed, have that kind of power. And I never saw a sea lion attack before. It honestly looks like it. Could have just like drug her to the bottom, like the power in which. Oh yeah, he it would have had that. no problem probably drowning her and her dad. And she dad was going for grandfather. <laughs> she was going for a selfie to start it. You can see she's in selfie pose. Like that's I didn't even know. I didn't even notice yeah, that. Look, that's okay. she's looking back. All right, that's oh, now that, okay. look. Look, you just stopped there. Look at her. Her. It's pulling her in, but her leaving her arms and legs still there. That's how I hard know. it's pulling her. Like, it's like a slingshot power. Like, Dude, the way she's just flying. I wish ESPN still did You Got Jacked Up. Because that's exactly what this would be. Selfer, come on, man. Um, the other day, Johnny promised us he'd bring us to John Lennon, Pete. 
uh, picture. Johnny, what happened? Uh, the producer never got back to me. Okay. Well, you know what? It's all my fault then. <laughs> but I will say that his lack of checking email got Gail some money because you know if that fucker put money on that horse, it would have came in dead last. All right. Put him in the bathroom. Put him in a fucking yeah, bathroom. Yeah, fucking mush. You're welcome, Gail. <laughs> I didn't Good even job think by of you, that. Gail. That was that was a solid bet. My brother loved that horse. I used him as my save horse, and he did save my day because I didn't like him that much. But ten bucks across the board on that little puppy saves a day. Yeah, dude. I'm. I was. I was really. First of all, you know, I trust Saratoga Chick. Like I, I know he's he knows what he's doing. But I was shocked the way it came out. Like I was just like, all right, he's he's got an idea. This horse is going to perform better than it should have. This <laughs> thing. Pulled it out. It was yeah, the, insane. It, that, that horse had the perfect pocket trip. It just sat behind the two leaders, let them go at it, and then he just pulled out of the pocket, came around, and that was it. It was. But how many lengths do you think he had to make up there? I mean, he came, he came from pretty far back. No, no, he sat at like third, fourth, almost the whole race. He was right in the pocket, right behind that first, the the two, because right from the gate, your your two favorites took off, and they just went at it, and they they. <clears throat> And Gail took the the with the actually the second favorite, not really the favorite. Who, yeah, yeah. You know the which was I don't know if you watched any of the coverage beforehand, but they showed everyone. Not a minute. The, it, they showed everyone in New York at the bar. Hey, I don't know. It was like you were watching Goodfellas, watching everyone from the from the uh, from Brooklyn. All excited because they thought, you know, the guys are talking about how they're going to buy out the entire fourth floor of Belmont for the Triple Crown, the whole thing, and then, poof, eighth place. No, uh, one thing I've realized: nobody cares about the triple crown. Eh, nobody. I mean, it, you know, but it would bring a bigger crowd to Belmont for for the day. That's for sure. You know, it would definitely bring a bigger crowd. Hey, you know, Vito's looking for a date this week. We know it's a slow week. Maybe the Hard Rock is something he can yeah, do. Yeah, come on down, Vito. You and Lobster Girl, which is an odd name for a girl that has anything to do with your show. <laughs> yeah. This is actually Larry <laughs> in that. <laughs> now, if you come to this thing uh, that St. Baldrick's does, the kids for uh, the cancer kids, people shave their heads for that. You could jump up on stage, shave your fucking head down. Be like a hero to her. That would be very classy. Uh, I, that, she would be so impressed. I don't know if I would shave my head. You know what? There's kids with fucking cancer. So you cancer, don't care about kids. Those I, are your saying. I care about cancer. Sick children. Why would you care about cancer? Care about the kids. I care about the kids and the cancer. With you and all your hair, you're supporting the fucking cancer, it seems like. <laughs> I'm not supporting the you're cancer. You're pro-cancer? I'm anti-cancer. Finally. Anti-cancer treatments? Is that what you're saying? No, anti-cancer. You're anti-finding a cure. I don't like cure. cancer. And what it does to children. Uh, Johnny, this got very uncomfortable very fast. but it certainly you, did. You might be getting a call for him. Please set him at Earl's table mm -hmm. if he decides to go. <laughs> yeah, can I be by the Springsteen pants? <laughs> Only if you wear the pants you wore to Thanksgiving. Oh, no, that'd then be, you'll take them back. That'd be <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> All right, Show Johnny. Later. Peace. Johnny's a little bit of a fucking gambler himself. Yeah. So you just gamble the big races, right? Um, I do like a couple a year. Then I usually go to the Belmont, like maybe once a year, and then Saratoga once a year. Mm -hmm. Well, you go to Chester sometime. I know, I See should. See that fucking racino that they got rocking. <laughs> Is it harness racing? Wait, that's racino that they have. I forgot. <laughs> 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 What's harness racing? The trotters? Yeah, the trotters, yeah. That's the fucking. I've never uh, been to one of those. That's all I was at when I was a kid, because that was near my house. You know, I um, I know somebody who watched someone die on the trotters. The fucking thing went forward, crushed the person driving the buggy. Oh, that's a horrible story. I know, isn't that awful? That's a terrible story. <laughs> Halfway through telling, I was like, "Well, this is gonna get sad." <laughs> he never was the same. He saw it as a child. You know what? And he was, he's very against horse racing because of it. Vito will shave his head just to fucking help out a little bit. That would be nice. Do that it would mean a lot to him. Wait, now I have to do it for people who saw trampled. It looks like you're not gonna do it for anybody. I'd have fucking shave your chick's head. <laughs> well, You're you selfish, is what it is. <laughs> yeah, he is. I mean, he's really selfish. Selfish is with the shellfish. <laughs> Lobster girl. <laughs> Lobster girl.
You bet. You banged a girl that they had to put in a nut hut. <laughs> That's fucking disgusting. That's a a year long stay. Was, year long. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? I never even heard of that. That makes a lot of sense. It does in hindsight. If somebody's got to go away a year, you might as well take them out back and shoot them. It's the same fucking thing. Well, she's so young. She might have some time ahead of her. Yeah. Horrific. Oh, my God. Underage? No, she's yeah. 20 years old. 20? With you? Oh, my God. I know. It's weird. That's horrifying. I, I know. feel bad. She can't drink. <clears throat> she's got her You're whole... old man. <laughs> you know Fucked what? up old man. She has her whole life ahead of her to be fucking tied to a fucking <laughs> bed. You're like that SNL robot. <laughs> Oh, I, did you see all the controversy with that? Yeah, People I did. got mad at that. I, I thought it was funny. I really laughed. Yeah. I was I mean, laughing that too. shocked me because it was like it came out of nowhere. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and, you know, um, I wish I could remember. Maybe it was Carla had tweeted, are they ripping off Chris Stanley because it's pedophile and White Castle both. <laughs> That's his gimmick. That's got to be Carla busting his balls on that. She fucking follows him around with a fucking notebook. <laughs> Just writing down all of his fuck. But the, the bit was this, if anybody missed it, it's your own fucking fault. I'm not going to say spoiler alert. Um, all the evil scientists get together, and then he made an evil robot. And they're just saying who's the fucking evilest, right? Right. There's like a shrink ray. There's yeah. a freeze ray. And then he made an evil robot that molests children. <laughs> and all the other scientists were appalled. <laughs> and he was like, well, we're, yes, this is, we're trying to be evil. <laughs> and it's really fucking funny. It's a funny joke. And I loved his description of how he made it. <laughs> and he's like, he molested the robot. And then hoped that he was scarred from that. And in turn would molest children. <laughs> It'll continue this. Like, <laughs> I mean, the only people that should be mad is White Castle. Yeah. <laughs> to tie them in. All, the only people who have a right to yes. go, hey, that's kind of fucked up. That's, that's like, too Whoa. close to home. <laughs> but this is what always happens with people. It's like they laugh at something, right? <laughs> Until it's something that somebody they know or happened to them. Right. And then they're offended. But, like, they'll laugh at a polio joke. And that's horrifying. Polio is horrifying. But you joke because the fear right. and weirdness that the world gives <laughs> Instead us. of just being like, it's funny because I don't know anyone with polio. That's why I like it. <sighs> the Rock did announce that he's running for president. Um, and Tom Hanks has signed on as his running mate. I think these guys could win it now. I think, uh, you know, I think that, you know, celebrity wins these days. Yeah. I don't think you could get a bigger ticket than that. Rock the vote. Oh, right. very good. I Wait hope you can grab that. Uh, Hawk, Hawk, he said, why didn't you ask Hard Rock Johnny about his bouncer that snagged the Times Square driver? Well, Hockey, if you learn how to use your newspaper, you will see it was not the Hard Rock driver, but the plan Planet Hollywood bouncer. Oh, yeah. was the guy who did it. And that's the name Johnny never wants to hear. Mm-mm. That's the name that makes his blood boil. He says, keep that name out of your mouth. Because they fucking ripped off his entire premise and did it poorly. <laughs> and that shitty bouncer, the only reason why he could go out there is because he had nobody in the hard rock that he had to worry about. I can't even find the hard rock in Times Square. <laughs> I know. I mean, the, the, the planet. Yeah, Hollywood I have no idea where it is. In Times Square. I'm not sure where it is. Fucking the hard rock is bigger than the town I grew up in. <laughs> I remember when Planet Hollywood was on 57th Street. I went once. Once. It's on a side street. Nobody Is goes it? to side streets. Which street's it on? Uh, I think it's like a block up from the Hard Rock in between the avenues. On 42nd? Yeah, it's right, I think it's like right near Times Square. I, I mean, not, um, Toys R Us. Well, there is no more toys oh, yeah. for us. Take R. a R. fucking R. look around. Children don't play with toys. <laughs> and they don't go to the circus anymore. The last night of the circus was last night. The Ringland Brothers, Barnum and Bailey. They were in um, Long Island. And they did not even sell out. The last night. <laughs> That's weird. Because I knew that it was coming. I knew that they they were ending the show. But I had no idea that it was this weekend. Like, I didn't hear much about it. No. Well, here's the deal with it. Have you ever been there? They say it's the greatest show on earth, but 
It's not even my top 50. <laughs> you know what I mean? False advertising. Yeah. I'd actually pick Journey with the Filipino guy above that. <laughs> I'm also going to ask you this. Like, a really good circus versus, like, a kind of shitty to mediocre. Like, is there any big difference? You're just like, you see the animals. There's clowns. Well, Somebody's going to swing on a trapeze. Well, Barnum and Bailey uh, and Ringling Brothers, they were gigantic when the other circuses are pretty small. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were gigantic. And they tried everything they could once they got rid of the elephants. Nobody. No. What can I tell you? Kids have fucking phone apps. Also found this out. You know the Filipino... Uh, Steve Perry has uh, been touring with Journey. They just announced that he's going to do a solo Steve Perry tour. What? Just covering Steve, Steve Perry's solo stuff. Really? I Look who it is, everybody. Tom Pop is in the house. No way. I like it when you call oh, me Tom yeah. Pop. But... <laughs> oh, my God. No way. Good to see you guys. Good to see, see you, pal. You. So nice to be here. I'm Chris, not doing anything. This is the only place I want to go. Does this, this is it. Does this mean you're doing coming to Papa Live though? Is this what this is all about? Yeah, you could. Yeah, I mean it's going to be sold out. You don't even yeah. need to plug it because it's that. Yeah, well loved. <laughs> I'm not here to plug. I'm here to see you guys. I am very upset though. Why is that? They shoveled up. They uh, shuffled the schedule. Mm -hmm. I used to uh, in L.A. I would do my show at the Comedy Store. Yeah. Drive home around um, 10 o'clock, 10.30 Pacific, and uh, I'd listen to you guys Oh yeah, on my way home. Now, I don't even want to mention what's on. I don't know yet because of the uh, OB radio turn to fashion audio yeah. talk. Right. Fashion audio. talk. So we're Fashions, not... Yeah. Fashion talk. Yeah, we're not on there. We're on this one, which we would come on 9 o'clock in... In L.A., Chris? Yeah, we'd be at 9 to midnight in L.A. 9 to midnight. Oh, wait a minute. So I'm just mixed up. Yes. Yeah, so a raw dog, you can still listen to us. Yeah. Oh. We're yeah. just not on Thank fashion. Thank God. Yeah. So you're not, you're not doing fashion reports. You're doing yes, we're, comedy. Yeah, we're not doing fashion. You're doing yeah. comedy. Well, we do it, but on the side. Okay. You know, just for fun. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Now, uh, Nick DiPaolo is on that channel yes he has a new show yeah he has a new show and i'm telling you right now there's a couple of things that got him upset you know in the news. no Nick. there's a few things <laughs> no. in the news what with the the, the libtards no uh, pc soccer moms <laughs> goddamn soccer, soccer moms. moms he doesn't want everybody to get a trophy <laughs> that makes him mad <laughs> one of the funniest human yeah. beings ever oh my god yes so funny and he for years, he's been trying to get a steady radio yes. gig, and uh, he deserves it. Finally, someone made the right decision. Yeah, he is just oh my god, is he funny? I think it, yeah. within three weeks, we'll say something that they'll have to pull him down for. <laughs> oh, he'll be fired, oh, yeah. but it's good that he got the shot. Yeah. <laughs> it's very likely. Yeah. But I'm having fun while it lasts. I am yeah. too. <laughs> I'm enjoying it this short period of time. It's like yeah. James Dean's career. You know what I mean? If you were there for it, right I, up to the car crash, it was get great. Remembered is the best. Oh. Yeah. 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 The ad for his ad, his show should be just wait for the C word. <laughs> I'm sure that was first day. I'm sure that was first day. No, that's great. That was really good. And things here are good? You Everything are is well? good. We you know you us. Do we don't we don't ever worry about a thing. Yeah. This yeah. is like easy living. This is my favorite show. It really is. So it is. It is. This is uh well, I just noticed Jen's boots. Thank she really you. rocked in heavy with the boots today. <laughs> Great. Yeah, Jen is uh, pretty special. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't recognize me because I had my um, my uh, rain hat on. Yeah, it's like an Alan, Alan Alda hat. I was sitting. Yeah. I was sitting. <laughs> you know, she was looking at right at me. She was just looking at other people. And she's like, no, I guess he's not here. <laughs> to be fair. Like, well, he signed on. That yeah. does look like someone who doesn't want to be seen. <laughs> it looks like a person yes. in disguise. It does. Either that or someone who's fly fishing. <laughs> that, that, that could be, be I more. know. I was like with the brown pants and the boots. I was like, I'm a Pepperidge Farm commercial. <laughs> Just running around the yard. Well, you know, it's so difficult when I come here for multiple days, which mm -hmm. I have been. Uh, it's You can't pack everything. You know, you right. can't pack. You can't pack your winter stuff, your rain stuff, your nice stuff, your board short stuff. You got, you got to pick. You got to play the odds. So, so you're a, uh, a constant traveler with your career. Yes. You're a good packer. Is it something you do well? I am. Yeah. But uh, 
this, you know, people are flipping out on airlines and, you know, fighting yeah. with each other and stabbing each other and getting millions of dollars. And, uh, I tend to side with the airlines mm-hmm. with, uh, with the way, because you're dealing with these animals all, right. all the time, the worst behavior. So I understand if once in a while you want to pick someone up and throw them out of the plane. I get it. Uh, that being said, they keep changing the dimensions of the planes. Right. It's, to the point now where the carry-on bags, the luggage companies have to make the carry-on smaller right. to fit in the thing. Like my last carry-on, I could fit tons of stuff. Now the regulated carry-on for the overhead is so much smaller. Yeah, it's like a shaving kit. You can, carry, yeah. you can have a shaving kit. <laughs> but yes, above your head, it used to be gigantic. You could put all you kinds put a, of stuff yeah. in there. Now it's so small, I have to, my, my smart packing is really being tested. Yeah. I'm wearing clothes multiple days at this point. <laughs> I hope you don't smell too. I um, uh, I will. I'll put everything in. Just put it under the plane. I'll I'll give my wallet, my phone, <laughs> my keys. I just don't. You're gonna check everything. Yeah, I check it all you because do? I feel like I'm in no hurry to leave the airport. You're gonna go out and catch a cab anyway. Yeah. So I just take my time. But what yeah. happens if, it, if they don't find it? I've what never I've never had lost? anything lost. Have you? Never. Yeah. Yeah, a couple times. Yeah. Um, yeah, a couple times. One one bag uh, went off, and right. I went on my trip, and I came home, and my bag was waiting for me. It had been to London. That's nice, though. <laughs> nice you know what trip. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> when you're, it didn't when, want to go to Des Moines. <laughs> when your bag has a much nicer getaway than you do, what's not to like? Yeah. This is a this is a person that I saw on uh, at the airport. Yeah. And this is what the people at the airlines have to deal with. Right. First of all, he's wearing shower flip flops. <laughs> Vito, Vito does the same thing. It. Awful. Yeah. And he's digging away. Now here comes the move. Here comes the big move. Picks his nose oh. and then flicks it. Flicks it. Did you see the flick? No. Yeah. She's gonna I lose can't. it. I'm She's gonna, gonna lose it. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Anything that deals with the nose, I'm out. I can't. He flicked it. Into the waiting area. Oh, my God. And then somebody rolls in there with their children and they're oh, rolling around on the oh, floor. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> Your eyes are watering. Oh, my God. Are you okay? I didn't know it was going to have that much. Yeah, she, she's not good with nose picking. <laughs> you can never work for the airline. No, no, I could never. Never. I couldn't but do it. Chris and Vito both dress like, uh, on a plane like it's toddlers going to bed. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> This is a you know a three hour flight. Your pants yeah. are not <laughs> yeah. going to be a detriment to We're you on, on a show plane. for three hours, yes. and you're wearing pants. Uh, yes. hard pants. <laughs> you are wearing full pants. <laughs> the basketball shorts are just so goddamn comfortable. I understand they're yeah. comfortable. So yeah. is being naked. Yeah. There's many things, things that are comfortable. I'm going to go on in a nightie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Being naked this is... how I'm comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> You're really comfy. But what is it about the... And and everyone does it. I mean, it's a majority thing now. I, For me personally, I like wearing the basketball shorts because the pants in the airplane seats are constricting from the crotch area. Like, it's he, not true. Here's oh the thing, God. and I'm, this is, so this is, I'm going to say the statement, and I know it's going to make a lot of gentlemen mad. I know it's going to. But I'm against the basketball shorts, period. Like, I do not like it. I don't think they look good on men. Not only, unless you, uh, unless you are on the court, not, I don't think it's okay. Not only did you not make me mad with that statement, <laughs> but I am, I will say right now, I am willing to leave my family and marry you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I even think shorts. Look at that. Is, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> and this Why? is like the picture like, I took as they rolled up. Like, oh. It's, it's like you took a picture of them in prison. <laughs> and by the way, that's the baby on prison. Vito yeah. on has not only sweatpants, but then he's rolled them up to the knee. Oh, so those oh are sweatpants God. rolled to the knee. I'm honestly staring they... at this. I can't tell which is which. <laughs> they look so much alike. I'm on the left. The twins. <laughs> is anyone there interested in meeting a girl? <laughs> Does anyone <laughs> no. 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 have an idea that possibly we might see a beautiful <laughs> Girl visiting from France. <laughs> Those are oh, joggers. They're not sweatpants. They're the fashionable kind of sweatpants. I, I'm. They look like um, baseball pants. To no, me. they were shiny what, like baseball pants. Here's yeah. what's the thing. No, uh, all no. the men were so upset. Why are women running around wearing leggings as pants? Why are they wearing jeggings? 
And now I, all I see is guys in joggers, which yeah, is yeah. essentially leggings for men. Yeah. That's what they're wearing. And it all should be at the gym. <laughs> it should not be walking around. That is one of the most horrifying pictures I've ever seen. <laughs> Look Actually, I wouldn't even give them a membership at the gym if I was there. Not... If I was no. at Gold's, I was like, no, we already have enough members. No, no. those guys walk into the gym, the girl behind the counter sits, sits up straight, and a security guard takes a couple steps closer. All right, so which which bugs you more? Chris's giant basketball shorts or Vito's <laughs> uh, shower shoe with sock combo? Oh, no. I hate that. Vito's so much worse. So much worse. <laughs> but if you're wearing Tom. nice like sand, like flip flops, like those are Adidas. They got the white stripes on them. They're no, fashionable. Those are, oh, no. no, they're not fashionable. In the shower, maybe. Yes, that's a shower shoe. That's yeah, like that is... if you were wearing on the beach without socks, I would say, okay, fine, that's what you want to do. Okay, live <laughs> your life. <laughs> the thing that gets Chris back into it is a 1980s hair fucking band that he's wearing, <laughs> like your Pat Bennett's are. It's good look. But then the other thing is. Vito, how do you stand that each shower show, one is going north and one is going south? <laughs> I know. I mean, that... It's like he's going for a gyneco- gynecological exam. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrible. I mean, I mean, there was a time when you would mock old men for yes. wearing sandals with socks. Like that yeah. was considered like the worst right. fashion faux pas. And now people are acting like he's so gross he wore his sandals without socks. <laughs> like they are acting like that's filthy now. Oh you're my all God. fucking just terrible. You're, you're on a plane. Yeah, it's, you're in public. By the way, uh, it is 45 minutes longer than any movie that you're going to see these days. <laughs> do you dress like this for the movies? I do not. To be comfy? Yeah, what's so special about the <laughs> airplane seat that is riding up your crotch? <laughs> I've never been in these seats in my life. What are you talking about? They're just really bunching up all what your you business. What you got to do is remove the dildo from the seat before you sit down. No. No. Yeah. No, I won't remove it. I also like to take the shoes off, too, when I'm traveling. I like I'm, I'll fucking oh, stab you, man. Oh, my God. I would yeah. stab you. I've probably taken pictures of them. I collect these. Pictures. You you sit next to a stranger and you take off your shoes. Yes, I do. And because if he sits in the aisle, I've seen him do it. He's got the foot out into the aisle because he's tall, and that foot does not have a shoe on it. No, it does not, no. When you take off your (laughs) shoe, is there any part of you that thinks maybe this would be upsetting to the people around me? I feel like my feet don't smell, as far as I know, so I think everyone should be cool. Everyone should be cool with it. That's that's my feeling. That's your feeling, that you think they don't smell. (laughs) But then you get, uh, you are angry at people... For talking next to you, a couple of the time. He, yes, he was very yeah. upset because a a committed couple yes. sitting next to him wanted to chat during the flight. Like furious, like three hours straight, just talking. Like this, that's what human beings would do. They would have a conversation. <laughs> this would have been the perfect time for you to put in your earbuds yeah. and, and yeah. enjoy some the new journey with the Filipino singer. Now you know I'm a nervous flyer. I asked to sit next to someone because I do like to have a little someone to like have a chat with. Right. If I'm feeling anxious. Right. So I'm totally fine with people talking. Sometimes that's how people, they're traveling together. Yeah. And, you Sometimes know, they're, they're on vacation. They're enjoying their life <laughs> as opposed to, yes. as opposed to <laughs> taking all their clothes off <laughs> and just enduring <laughs> this flight. You know, if you, you fly private with somebody in their private plane, it's a major faux pas to take a nap. That that is like going to someone's living room and falling asleep there. <laughs> and no idea. They will not put up with it. Because they're hosting an, yes. uh, the, you know, it's like a hosting an event. They're like, you're you're a guest on my plane. Yes. With the way he dresses, I don't think this private jet is <laughs> <It's> really <laughs> hot air. That's the only point. Let's private focus. Jet. Let's focus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Malkovic. <laughs> oh, my God. That's barefoot. <laughs> so I, I have been barefoot before. Oh my god! Ew. Oh my god! There was a boy. <laughs> You're the fucking nature boy. <laughs> yeah. Terrific. What do you? All right, so that's how you roll. Yeah. In public, in a public place. Yes. Uh, so what happens when you walk in the door to your apartment? Pants come off immediately, like in the foyer. The pants will rest. Just it, off. Yeah, just off. Just drop. I just drop trial. Underwear too. And it, <laughs> Uh, that that comes later, but do you put later. something on? 
Uh, no, I just just in my underwear around my house. Just walk around in his underwear. Of course. That looks. By the way, when you walk around a home <laughs> in your underwear, I mean seriously, that's the, the definition of lower class. That's like that. I am only just like imagining you as a giant toddler. Like that's yeah. all because like wearing. But everyone yeah. wears underpants. Pick up a yes I, I, under uh, the pants. Yeah. Pick up a robe, okay, and then you're like a guy lounging around his home. Comes. But just in underpants. <laughs> he comes in, ridiculous. takes his pants off, gets a cup of Cheerios, <laughs> a rattle, and starts running around the house. Chris, what you need is a woman to beat because you're almost there. <laughs> you're so close. You're so close. <laughs> you could only find the right girl. <laughs> oh my god, it's disgusting. Do you have a girl? Oh no, I do not. No. Okay. Mm-mm. Neither he nor Vito. The comfortable dressers. Just, Both of them have been left aside. I yeah. do basketball shorts at home at least. That's not the that's tank better. Top, though. That's good. Well, tank top. Yeah. I, I get hot. Right. All right. Are but you both you... wearing your undershirts? Yeah. You know it. <laughs> All right. Here's what I want you both to do. Uh, and I, I, you know that I haven't seen them. I want you to hide your eyes. Okay. Tom, yes. Hide your eyes as they disrobe into their undershirts and see the all right and now expose yourself look at the right, yes yep. the 1910 oh my God. look <laughs> wait you got a real wife beater on today instead of your wrestling gear i expense these actually i bought these you why wear them. why wear that why like what is that doing there is no there is, it's not there's covering structure. any part of your body except your belly. There's no, I mean, there's hair and shoulder hair. Armpits, that, that is a, a cloth free zone. Your no. armpits and six inches below, you're just dripping sweat. No, but see, it, it, it's from the fucking chest, belly. Don't touch your nipples while you talk. You just rub your nipples. Come on. This is I, too it's, much. It's subconscious. Oh, I just God. end up just poor touching Jen. them. Poor, I know. Oh, poor I Jen. think Jen she likes it. it. <laughs> she, likes, she likes it. Well, give a pose, too. Like, act like, yeah. I don't know why. Sexy pose. You'll have to do, like, uh, what is that when you get the two, the side by side? Yeah, Split screen. Yeah. Well, you have them both done as an after and after. <laughs> these, are, these are horrible. You, and these are young men. These are very young men. Who they shopped know, in the 1940s. And, and you're in your early 20s, right? Yeah, I'm 24. 24. Unbelievable. So did your dad dress like this? Is that where you got the idea? I don't know. My dad's dead. Your uh, dad's dead when he well, was alive? Chris, your dad? <laughs> you never met him? Passed so away, who, Ron. So who passed this on to you? Uh, I don't, I Old just... timey movies. <laughs> <laughs> Raging Bull. I really like Raging Bull. What strong man was in your life? <laughs> Bruno San Martino. Andre the Giant. You, you watch Popeye and Brutus? <laughs> <laughs> they both look like Bluto. They really do. Yeah. The Bluto brothers for sure. <laughs> that look. is, I do not know why that's on. Why is that on? Now, here's now what I'm <laughs> starting to try to figure out. Is it weirder with a lot of hair or with no hair? Like, so Vito's repping, uh, yes. he's a much hairier dude. He's much got hairy. testosterone. Right. Testosterone. And then Chris has no hair whatsoever. Very little hair, yeah. No hair whatsoever. Yeah. What is the weirder look with this, with this tank top? I'm going to say, I'm going to say no hair, definitely weirder. <laughs> yeah. It's like a giant baby. <laughs> but more hair, definitely more disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> I've tried to shave, but like, I don't, my problem is I don't know when to stop here. Yeah. So like, never stop. Never stop. Here, just keep shaving. No, stop you not be I like the chest. Stop is not a word. I like the chest hair, but I don't know where to stop here. Right. So I've done it before where I just stop at the tank top. I was like, I like the idea of just having a little cap sleeve of hair. Yeah, he's just got like... little shoulder pads. <laughs> yeah, you can see I've definitely, I've, uh, I've workshopped with shaving because it gets darker <laughs> right at this line. Well, then, do you yeah. have it on the back too? You have yeah. a yeah. Well, I feel like he. We, mm. Yeah. I feel like lot. look if he's if you're trimming up, there's a, there's hope here. Yeah. He's conscious. He's trimming. Yes. He's, he's yes. thinking about other people. He's thinking about what he's doing out in the world. <laughs> right. You're on the right path. Thank you. You have a long way to go. <laughs> oh yeah. But you are definitely on a path. <laughs> you're actually the only two guys that would look better with skin cancer. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an improvement. <laughs> 
Both of you should be like the first wrestling team that only goes off the bottom rope. <laughs> no one has pulled off that gimmick before. <laughs> oh, here comes their big move. They're crawling across the... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is, I, oh my god. So What's wrong? Horrible. What's happening? I'm just so, I feel so bad in so many ways. <laughs> so, if you could on an airplane, you would rock this shirt and those shower flip flop things. <laughs> I prefer shoes. I don't like flip flops. But you take like, them off, so what does it matter? <laughs> yeah, right. like, better off with flip flops. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, Vito probably I, doesn't, so he doesn't take no, off the shoes. I'm not some sick. For, I, don't, I leave the flip flops on in the flight. It's just because I don't want to go through the whole taking off my shoes process to get through security. Get a loafer uh, or something. Pre register, and they just bring you in. That's <laughs> I don't it. think I qualify for that. What do you mean you don't Everybody qualify? Does. Everybody does. Yes. Yes. You just have to. Go for a meeting. All right, I'm going to go to that meeting this week. Yeah. That's bullshit. You're go not to, going. Okay, maybe next week. <laughs> You're not going. <laughs> this is so fun. I love how it's black and white shirts, too. I know. Yeah. So funny. That's a new look for Chris. He's normally, and I'm going to say it's the worst look for you, Chris. Is it, you think? That black is better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's it funny. is how, long, <laughs> how long do you keep these shirts before you my throw them out? Here. <laughs> oh my god, that's disgusting! My eyes are up here. How long? How long before you throw this shirt out? I don't know, man. Maybe like oh. end of the year. I'm gonna keep this. This thing. I feel like this thing's brand new, so it's got some right. some time on it. Wow, it looks pretty stretched out in the <laughs> arm area. Why, why oh, did you have serious sex and pay for it? <laughs> Uh, I think it was it was during Austin, so it was like I was just buying a bunch of stuff, and like I'm running out of because I'm a bad packer, so I like didn't pack enough clothing, so I was like I need I need to fucking get some clothes. Yeah, I don't know why they would pay wow. for that. <laughs> That's, yeah, it, has, all, it hasn't been all, approved yet, but we, I'm hoping. We all brought our own clothes. Yes. <laughs> They're all our own if clothing. You, if you expect me to travel, you have to buy my clothes. <laughs> I'll be wearing this to the show tonight, therefore expense. I'm, I'm going to have to go to an Italian deli and shop for clothes. <laughs> Now, does this uh, come with olive oil, or is that extra? <laughs> Can I get red tomato sauce stains on it, or do I have to do that myself? Oh my God! So, no, isn't there like why not? Don't you want to look and feel pretty good? On well, here's the, the thing: like, and see why? other people. Like you might run into people you know from work or from right. life, and maybe impress a girl on your way to Austin. And like, why not? Especially now that everybody's dressing like a slobo. Yeah. If you even just put on like a collared shirt. People will be like, "Wow, he must, yeah, he must work for Google." Yeah, it's a polo. <laughs> oh, nice! That's a polio shirt. That's that you're you've got, you've got potential. <laughs> you're trimming up those pubes on your shoulder. <laughs> you're wearing a college shirt. If you could just fix up that bottom half, you're going to be good. He's got a fancy but hat. Do you see Chris as being unfixable? Ah, uh, come on, Tom. They're too, they're both too young to have given up. Yeah, I don't know if I want to fix Chris. <laughs> right, I, I kind of feel like it's almost like two is too much, but one would be fun. He's behind the glass. He's over there. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's he's sweating out of his armpits. Hopefully, catching it on his shirt at the bottom <laughs> part. I I kind of like that existing. Mm. But let's fix Thanks. this guy up. <laughs> I should get back in the gym. You're right. No, no. Don't, don't work out. You're not, fine. Not okay. the gym, but you need to have a personal style. Dude. Yeah, you're yeah. a big dude. Just own it. We're just dress. Just take off those those little joggy sh sweats. Joggers. Yeah, that's for like fourteen year old skinny boys. It's not for men like us. I'm no fourteen year old skinny boy. No, yeah. you're not. So I you got, have to throw those pants out. I got to go to men's warehouse soon to buy a suit. That would for be, what? That would be nice. Lewis's his wedding. Oh, no, that's, you're that's in That's like it? a month. Of, well, no, I mean, I should wear a suit to the wedding. Yes, uh, you should. Right. And not, and not the shower shoes. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> you want wear. a nice hard shoe hey, for you. Chris, so he'll expense it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you got to go get a suit. Do you have, you've never had a suit? Uh, I haven't had one in years, so none that fit. Right. Anymore. right. Wear, wear your old communion suit. <laughs> That'll work out for you. <laughs> like a little short suit. Oh, I have a picture of that. <laughs> it's all white. It's in a it's mall a short in Jersey. Suit. Yeah, and he's like John John. He's Aww. saluting his dad's casket. This is going by. Best picture ever. It's so funny. Best yeah. picture ever. Little tiny John John. Yeah. And you still have that suit. Uh, probably, my mom doesn't throw a lot of stuff away, so that white suit is probably somewhere. Nice. Somewhere in the You're going to be, I, you know what? When you go for the suit of men's warehouse, they usually have like a, uh, buy one, get two free. Get, Ooh. get two. Yeah. <laughs> you come rocking in here in a suit. Yeah. I mean, people are just going to be like, well, how much more money do you want? 
That's yeah, what's going to happen. That is true. They, They're going to be like, so you, you have uh, self-respect and you're working hard and you want to go someplace. Uh, let's get, let's renegotiate your contract. What is your career goals? You never say. You know? I don't know. I like I like producing a radio show right now. Which show? The Bennington Show. Oh, my God. I had no idea. <laughs> oh, you he's, your producer? You, yeah. he's your producer? I had no idea. I thought he was an intern. <laughs> no. I've been hired for quite a while. Now. Really? Oh, my God. Oh, you're doing a terrible job. Oh, fuck. I should just keep my mouth shut then. <laughs> Did so, he come to the interview like this? <laughs> yeah. Where do you see yourselves in 10 years? Uh, coronary? <laughs> Probably. Uh, I don't know. I don't think that far ahead. That's good. Mm. How far ahead do you think? <laughs> That's good. Lunch? <laughs> yeah, like, really good. like a week at a time. <laughs> you'd, you'd be screaming. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> Where am I living? <laughs> yeah, what would happen to you if something happened to your mom? I would just, I mean, I would take the apartment and then just. They would let you do that? Yeah, because I've been there over two years. I get mail sent there. Uh huh. Yeah. Everybody in New Yorker is like a, a, in New York, they're like a fucking jailhouse lawyer. Right. They know anything. They can't turn off your water. <laughs> like I, I hear this shit at my coffee shop all the time. Anything comes up that anyone has a fucking apartment from, you could fucking not pay rent for two years <laughs> right. before they yeah. can get rid of you. They know exactly how long an eviction takes. Yeah, we've got our rights. Yeah. Yeah, in New York, it's like you need you need to prove that you have lived there for at least two years. Or you can get your name put on the lease. Because it's rent control, right? Yeah. It's, we, my mom pays very low for the Upper West Side because we've been in this building since it was built. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm just starting to realize that uh, at this angle that the let my on our left, the strap of your thing is actually torn. Yeah. Oh, just right here. Yeah. yeah. The other on side. Our left. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I go through these things. Usually yeah. it, it rips here uh -huh. from the sweat that builds up. Right. In the, just the cleavage area. Yeah, the cleavage cleave. area. <laughs> or over here. That's right. A, that one's a cheeseburger rip. <laughs> <laughs> You're just hearing the tears as he's at White Castle. <laughs> Growing as he, <laughs> as he wears it. Tom Papa in with us. You don't even want to push this show because it sells out. Sure, go ahead. It's nice for people to hear because I do it every month. So. Come to Papa Live happening in the Village Underground. Uh, you got Mark Norman, Sam Morrell. Uh, Marina Franklin, Paul Marcy on this show. Yeah. Now, what do you guys do? Your your performing. This is sketches. A, this is a live radio, like a classic yeah. radio show. We do. Uh, it's all comedians, and it's uh, music, it's stand up, and it's uh, funny sketches. Mm, it's fun. Yeah, it's really fun. It's a lot of. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. People love it, and uh, then it airs on uh, Comedy Greats. Fantastic on Friday. That's a now, great group, too. Uh, well, Paul yeah. Morrissey, I hear, has a documentary being shot on him right yeah, now. Yeah, we were working in uh, San Francisco together, and there mm -hmm. was a, a film crew following Paul Morrissey. <laughs> I was like, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> that, Chris, did he tell you what it's about? No, it's just that he has a crew following him is the only thing he told me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but a documentary is normally about something, right? What is it about? It's about him. The life of Paul Morrissey. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, Paul and I are good buddies. We yeah. do our podcast together, Come to Papa Podcast, uh, every week. And, um, yeah, I, I do not know what they're filming. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's Bernie Madoff. So. I would, you know what I'd love to see is, uh, get some of him, uh, playing basketball. He's a good ball player. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Round Paul Morrissey, <laughs> soft-spoken young yeah. man, uh, is apparently a killer. Yeah, a killer on the court. Well, I think he was telling me he was a jock in college, like he was. Yeah. Was he? Yeah. Yeah. Same uh, shape though. Yeah, same exact shape, but you know. His dad was a basketball coach. Charles Barkley. Uh, you know, he had that shape, and look at him, <laughs> Hall well, of Famer. Yeah, did well for himself. <laughs> yeah. Barkley actually wears um same undershirts as these fellas, <laughs> but black and white striped. <laughs> yeah. Nice. A little yeah. nicer. Look how comfortable they are having them off. They yeah, no, they put... didn't. Neither one of them felt the need to put the shirt no, back on. why would they? Feel free. They're like, uh, <laughs> finally. <laughs> My work life is finally like my home life. <laughs> so much cooler without a shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you you always dress. Yes, I do. Well, yeah. I'm a man. You're a grown up. I'm a grown up. I figure a, a grown up should have a jacket. Yes, 
Now, if you notice, a lot of comics won't get dressed up until they do the Tonight Show. Right. And then they go out and buy a, a nice suit, suit for the Tonight Show. <laughs> and then the next night you see them. You know, they're in a fucking scuba pants. They, you know, <laughs> they don't care at all. But I yeah. noticed everybody doing the Tonight Show goes out and gets a... Yeah. Uh, isn't, is Vecchione doing it this week? Yes, Wednesday. He's doing it Wednesday. Nice. I bet he buys the suit. I bet he goes yeah. out and buys yeah. the suit. Buys yeah. a nice suit for himself. Yeah, and looks awkward on camera because yeah, right. he never wears it. It's like not tailored yet. <laughs> and you're like, oh. Now, you go out on the road with Jerry Seinfeld. I used to. I thought you did something with them very recently. I did uh, the Beacon on Thursday night. Oh, I came in and did the Beacon. That's very cool. Yeah, it was really fun. That's his once a month uh, gig that he yeah, does. Yeah, once a month at the Beacon, and because uh, you know I'm busy out doing my thing, so I can't right. really work with him that often. We're good pals, and uh, so we try and carve out one weekend a year to go do that. Did you? Did he tell you about this thing that he did? This special that he shot? Yes. Is that crazy? Crazy. Uh, they redid the old comic strip to look like it was the 70s, and then he did his material Yeah, from that time. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I don't think anyone's ever done that before. No. that's uh, He wanted to kind of show like what he built his career on. That uh -huh. It's very much about the bits. It's purely, yeah. it's not about, you know, comedy now is a lot of, you know, touchy-feely, like this is... Yeah. My, you know, getting deep, and he's like, no, these are jokes. It's all built on jokes. This whole career is built on jokes, and this is where I wrote them, and this is when I performed them, and here they are. It's uh, it'll be interesting to see. I, I I can't I can't wait to see it, just because how many people have material that would hold up from their first four yeah. years. Yeah, most people don't know who they are. Yes, but when I was thinking about it, I'm like, okay, the first time I saw Jerry on TV, he reminds me of Jerry now. There's not. Yeah. You, know, you would also say no personal growth. You know, you could. <laughs> <laughs> He's really in a rut. Yeah. <laughs> Just spinning around. But stuck in the mud. How many comics did you say, like, mo a good portion of their material is either uh, pop culture references, True. current events. True. Things yeah. that are very relevant this but year. I wonder if he'll be saying, like, what's with Gerald Ford? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be actually pretty great. What's well, crazy that. to me is that he saved all these jokes. Yeah. Like, he has them all written out and saved in a file for 35 years. Yeah. Like, I've, you know, do stuff and then you kind of move on. And it's like... You to, he really his just shows how his brain works. Yes, that he's just like a comedy robot, like do, 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 like the file system of all this material. Uh, I saw the thing where Joan had physical files in her house too that she could that, she, and they were old school. They wow. weren't in a computer yeah. that she yeah. could go over and look at mother-in-law and just pull out. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It's That's so awesome. Great. Yeah, it really is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, but amazing. real joke writing. Is it's rare even for comedians. It's rare that people could go. Here's the jokes that yeah. I have. Yeah, you when, know, when you start to like, you'll have a joke. Sometimes I would like when when I would try and get on Conan early on, mm -hmm. and they'd say, "Could you just write it out?" Because I'd already done the show. Could you just write it out and send it to us? And there were there were times when I would have a joke that killed in the club, but on paper, right? It was like. You know, pretty lame. Like yeah. You needed to have, like, <laughs> make fa funny face here. Inflection. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Get Timing. louder here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but to see stuff that's... The first time that uh, that really stood out to me as a young comic was reading a book of uh, all of Woody Allen's material. Yes. I mean, really written, great word jokes. Yeah. I was like, all right, I have to work harder. <laughs> well, he was always even uh, what he is a filmmaker that he'd be editing one movie as he's writing the next movie. Yeah, to do those two things, either one right. is exhausting. Yeah, because they're both writing in in a sense. Yes, so, they're yeah. both writing, and it's completely different. Th yeah, and he would just become that machine. That would be like, oh no, this actually feels good. Yeah, because then I don't have to think about all the other stuff. Right, it scares exactly. me. <laughs> <laughs> In my personal life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a, I just finished uh, my first book. I just handed it in last Monday, mm -hmm. which will come out next year. And uh, that really got me into, into the mindset of, okay, every day you come in, sit at your desk. And, you know, I would always kind of work that way. But with stand-up, it's like, eh, if I get an hour in, that's a lot. Yes. 
But now to be like sitting there for a full day writing every day, months at a time, it was like you do start to get used to it and you start to feel like, okay, yeah. this is a fun thing to do. I enjoy doing this. And I was like, can I translate this to stand up? Can I put that? into writing stand-up. Why not? Why can't I accumulate that much material? But the problem is you have to take that material and go up on stage with it. I can't just accumulate 300 pages of material. Right. Like that won't, that'll far outpace the times you get up on stage and actually start working on it. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to go back to being lazy. Yes. <laughs> yes. That moment of, I have nothing. <laughs> Going up there right now. You just heard my name. It's just, it's the funniest thing, right? That, that the art of comedy where you're just like, I don't know. Um, I want to go up there. Yeah. See. You this could always tell when the comedian's like, so, what else is going on? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so, <laughs> what do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, he's so improv -y. <laughs> No, he's got nothing. Now, the book that you wrote, yeah. this is your experiences, your life. What did you write about? It's uh, comedic essays about family life. Oh. It's basically that I've been observing you as a comedian. I've been observing you for 20 years, you and your family. And here's some things you may not have noticed about your family life, and this maybe will help you survive. And it's broken down by parents and sisters. And now, did you have to keep handing these to the editor and hearing back like you're in school? Of what no, the, uh, I just when I sent it last week, uh, yeah, was it. That, that was, was the it. first time. Yeah, I didn't wow. want to get feedback along the way. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to send it, and uh, they haven't gotten back to me yet. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm quietly waiting for a. Uh, we need to talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said these were comedic. <laughs> it seems kind of dark. Yeah. Very vulgar in places <laughs> I did not expect. But you know, um, I, have you ever read, uh, Jim Harrison? You, you know, Jim Harrison? Yes. He does like travel stuff as well, right? No, he's, yeah. uh, he was a guy from Michigan. He passed recently. He was a guy, he wrote Legends of the Fall. Oh, yes, movie. yes. Oh, he had that eye, he was an yeah. older guy and had that eye going. Like a, brilliant, brilliant writer. Brilliant writer. Yeah. He's a beast. He yeah. just writes about food, drinking, yeah. and sex, and hunting, and in this really, like, macho way, but then has these poetic, lofty flourishes that are just like, he's the most sensitive person in the world. So anyway, I've been reading him on my on this trip. He wrote for Esquire. He wrote... All of these essays on food, eating food, drinking wine, eating just like a monster. Just you have to go and have a three hour lunch and, you know, yeah. bring out more pork bellies and bring out more wine. And I'll take a nap before dinner. And I literally that's what I've been reading while I'm in New York. I'm just walking around <laughs> like, anybody yeah. want to go eat with me? <laughs> I need spaghetti. Does anybody want to eat spaghetti with me? He had this. Thing where he used to, I think, mainly write naked because there was something about even clothing on his skin really would hurt him very much. He had some kind of <laughs> nerve thing at, towards the end of his life. But For you real? Always, yeah. And you would always see these pictures of him. You just have this long cigarette ash going, <laughs> just typing, <laughs> like living in the desert when he wasn't in the yeah, mountains. in Arizona. Yeah, it yeah. would be down in this, like, really rough desert to up in the mountains of... Arizona. But Legends of the Falls is amazing. Amazing. All amazing. of his books are amazing. Yeah. He's really, really great. And just one of those guys that just devoured life. Yeah. It's amazing. So my book will be nothing like that. No, nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, but, yeah. But you know, like when you... That's awesome. Yeah. But then you see him when he's older and you're like, okay, so he died at like 72 or something. Yeah. yeah. That one, that one at the bottom. It's like, all right, so I guess... It's not the healthiest lifestyle. Right. <laughs> you can't always have a three hour lunch. But, right. <laughs> right. You really shouldn't. But he enjoyed his 72 years. Yeah. That, There's I a mean, lot of people that live longer, but what did they do? Watched a lot of TV. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. And what, what, you know, got it. So yeah. the healthy one lives an extra 10 years. It's yes. not like 10 extra good years. Right. right. A lot of hobbling around yeah. and needing help up the steps. Hobbling around and yeah, just like telling you, I'm seeing three different doctors this week. Right. If that sounds like the worst of all. Yeah. You're constantly seeing doctors. Just constant. And getting procedures. Yeah. 
Yeah. Probably go out with a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're married, it's double the amount of oh, yeah. appointments. Just shuffling each other around. To <laughs> <Does places. it? laughs> yeah, I'd rather have three bottles of wine. Chris, how, how long did your dad live? He was 52. Yeah. 53, maybe. Something right there. Jeez, Early 50s. Young man. And his thing was heroin, right? He loved the junk. Oh, yeah. really? And alcohol. So wow. Maybe you should be. That's actually kind of rare because a lot of junkies don't like alcohol. It kind of fucks with the good high. He was a rare one, that guy. Yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> one of the good ones. Yeah. Did he live with you? Yes, he did, yeah. Yeah. Did you know that it was trouble? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There wasn't much hiding going on in a one-bedroom apartment. What what, what? At what age were you were th- thought to yourself, oh, my dad uses heroin? Um, I knew definitely when I was in seventh grade because, like, he fucking he was real fucked up one day, and, like, he was just in the bathroom with a needle hanging out of his arm. Wow. That, was, that was like a clue for That's you. Like, that was you're like, like, wait a hmm, second. Hmm. This, there's something might be wrong here. Way to go, gumshoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's seventh grade. <laughs> you look so much better with that collared shirt on. Thank you. <laughs> that means a lot. You know, you can suit back yeah. up. So. Yeah. <laughs> the examination is over. <laughs> Speaking of appointments, <laughs> you can put this back on. Oh, my God. You know, we were talking about guys who live Life, Rick. Did you know Rickles? I did. At all? Yeah. Which is all um, to me just amazing. Amazing to say. I uh, yeah. I uh, I met him once. Mm-hmm. Worked with him. I skipped a vacation with my family to go see him <laughs> because uh, they asked if I would open for him at, at the Montreal Comedy Festival. Wow. And I was so uh, excited. I just told my family, "I'm going to miss half this vacation, but I got to go do this. this. Is my one chance, right, to see him?" And we worked two nights together. It was the greatest because, you know, you're there two nights. You can kind of, you know, mess around. You've got time. It's not like in and out. So by the next day, I'm just throwing in softballs. Yeah, right. I'm just like, hey, uh, Don, so now that we're uh, working together two nights in a row, do you think when we get back to L.A. we'll, like, hang out and go to dinner and stuff? Mm -hmm. Don't get carried away. (laughs) (laughs) Don, do you think you're going to you're going to watch my you're going to watch my set tonight? Mm -hmm. Please, you're you're taking up air in my dressing room. <laughs> and then uh, at the end of the show, at the end of the whole run, he uh, I went in. He makes a Rickles. He makes a uh, it, he has everything for a martini. He's got the glasses. He's got the shaker, the ice, the olives, the vermouth, the vodka. No time to shake it. He just pours all of it into a glass. <laughs> it's not shaken. Just pours it all in, waves the vermouth over it, and just drinks it straight out of the out of the glass. So I come in, and he's in a. Silk robe and his little <laughs> elegant slippers, you know, with a little insignia on the toe. And, uh, Tom, Tom, come here. And I, I kneel down next to him and he takes my hand. You know, sometimes like older people take your hand and they'll just grip. They'll yeah. just, they won't let go of it. He was doing that. So it felt like a grandfather or something. And he says, uh, Tom, in all seriousness, I, uh, I was able to watch your set tonight. I said, Oh, thank you, Don. Have you ever thought of a career in food delivery? (laughs) It's nice. You go around, you make people happy, bring them the food, throw in a joke once in a while so don't shoot yourself in the head. (laughs) That is so fucking great. It was the greatest. I also, I just think it's amazing. Like you do comedy. You don't feel the need to get into slippers and a robe after, but those guys were like, that was all part of the thing. Yeah. I mean, when he came in, like they do these, Big shows up there a lot. Yeah. They, they're called gala shows, and they'll yeah. have a celebrity host and some comedians on it, and they record them for TV. I've done a ton of them, and, you know, it's always, like, tons of people in the hallway. Mm-hmm. You don't even know who the host is half the time because they're just dressed, you know, like these guys. You know, you don't really – it's nothing right. that special. When Rickles came in, it was guys in tuxedos. They closed down the hallway. They cleared everybody out. They put on like a big band music. There's, uh, his manager, Tony V, is walking around in his tux and stuff. Just t- Mr. Papa, nice to see you. Come out to the dressing room. Everything was formal. It made you feel like something really special was going to happen. Yeah. And that's how they treated show business. This, it was all really, really special. It wasn't disposable like it is today. Yeah, those guys would do their show. People would be invited. 
They would take a shower first, then get dressed like that, <laughs> yeah. have food. And you're like, they're there for another two hours yeah. after the I show. I love that song. I love yeah. all that stuff. I like. I remember you had told me like a lot of the old school entertainers would be walking around backstage with their pants off and folded, so you yeah. don't make a crease, like you don't mess yeah. up the crease in your pants. Yeah. So I was just like suit from like top up, like yes. drinking a martini, and I'm like, that's the best. Yeah. Like that's so awesome. It's the best. It really just made it feel. <laughs> so great. I mean, I roll into shows. You want to get there like, so I just have 20 minutes before I yes, go on. Yes, you want no They time. get there four in the afternoon and they're hanging <laughs> out. And it's like, the, this is our life. That's, yeah, that's where, where else life do you want to be? Yeah. Where that's where you... life takes place. There's cold cuts in their dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> Make a sandwich for yourself. <laughs> really? Always. Yeah, a lot of booze. Yeah. Oh, it was the best. Yeah, and by the time the show was over, he's in a silk robe, <laughs> just taking people. Yes, come on in. Come talk to me. What do you got? Oh, it was so great. That's fantastic, so though. It's You're right. It is a lifestyle. Like, we mm-hmm. are show people. Right. You're not just like, oh. so everybody now wants to uh, be a regular guy who, you know, does some entertaining, but they don't yeah. want, they don't. You'll see, I, I've seen guys. Like the night of their special that they're shooting, hanging around out front talking to the audience. Yeah. And I'm like, they're not going to react when you come out the same way. They, no. they see you as part of them. I know. Yeah. There's, there's, I worked with Joan Rivers once mm-hmm. and, uh, it was right after 9 11 and we were doing something at the garden, like the, the theater yeah. at the garden. And, uh, she was great. It was the first time I met her and she was like really a great comic like we were backstage she's like throwing lines and it was just like respected her the minute i met her it was just amazing so anyway at the end of the show at the end of my set i say good night thank you very much i walk off and she's in the wings she goes okay now go take your bow and i laughed because i'd never heard that we're you know we don't we're comedians we don't go back for a bow she goes she pushes me go go take your bow and I went back out. I took a bow, and the applause went up. And you know they were, okay. yeah. and I came back. She goes, she smacked me in the arms. She goes, that's how show business works. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but all those rules really mean something. Yeah, you know, those rules came out of the Catskills, where people went to a show, they expect it, a show, a yeah. real right. show. Yeah, and Joan respected that and loved it. But do you think that like young comedy audiences? Aren't into that, or do you think they want you to? They want I, to feel like you're one of them. Look, I think people act the way they think it's supposed to be. I was you know just gonna I mean? say that. Like, I bet, I bet if if uh, performers carried themselves that right. way, they would go, okay, that's what they're into. But of course, if a performer is going to be a regular guy who's going to hang out and someone you can tweet back and forth with, of course you're going to enjoy that too. So yeah. it's right. kind of like it, it's more on the way the performer carries themselves. Right. Yeah. Make I, your choice to do it that yeah. way. I remember there was this uh, thing that I read. There was like this soul tour that was in Las Vegas and it was everybody and they would be, you know, playing craps and all, but James Brown stayed in his room for three days. He wasn't walking through the lobby because he wanted that place to explode right. when they saw James Brown. And that's why those guys would send the band out first. Bah, yeah. bah, 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 bah. You know what I mean? <laughs> for like and a half people, hour. The people like, what's going on? And then when you come out, they're going Dear crazy. God, yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> And then, you know, he did that bit of passing out on stage. And now I'm fighting my way back to the audience. And everybody so knew, that, yeah, everybody knew that it was horseshit, but it was like wrestling at the same time. Yeah. You had to, the, the, the audience had to be yeah. involved. Yeah. You know, and manipulated. It was yes. like, that's the way you did it. Right. You, it, all that stuff really, really works. Dim the lights. Yes. Get the spotlight. Bring up the music. Da, da. Yeah. <laughs> you know? When I work with Seinfeld at the Beacon, he does this great thing. It's kind of like a classic show busy thing. It's all big band music leading up, you know, as people are walking in. And then the last song before he comes on is uh, New York, New York, with Sinatra. The lights change just a bit. The song comes on. Everybody's like, you. they applaud right. at the beginning of the song. They, they know something different. Yeah. We're getting close. It's starting to happen. And then by the end of that song, the lights just go right on the final note. The place explodes. It's yeah. just, you know, why not do that stuff? Yeah, exactly. And even when um even when Jerry drops in to do uh sets, he doesn't hang in the room. 
Right. He's always out. And when he walks out in New York, people are seeing Jerry Seinfeld. Well, when, when Jerry Seinfeld, uh, gets announced and when he drops in, people don't react until they see him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because they think it's, it's a joke. Right. He thinks it's ridiculous. <laughs> but like, why would he be here? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what, and why not give him that moment? Why, why be yeah. over talking with the other comics, you know? Right. People are vacationing or whatever in New York and they, they go home with this. Yeah. We were at a 200 seat club and Jerry Seinfeld walked in. He's that, so huge. Yeah. I mean, just that he sells out the beacon in one like hour, he'll sell it the whole year. Yeah. He just is huge. We went out for pizza after. We come out of the place. It's like midnight. We're just walking out of this pizza place and this homeless lady with a box on her head folded up. She's, she, her and her, her friend. She has no teeth. She's just like underneath like, like Port Authority. She just walks, she stops, she goes, Oh my God, Jerry Seinfeld! Look who it is! It's yeah. Jerry Seinfeld. This woman hasn't had a TV in yeah. thirty years. She's carrying around a box. Even she, if she had the cash, would go see a Jerry show. That's how huge he is. Well, just think what he has. He has the shows on at like seven o'clock and seven thirty every night, and then eleven o'clock if you want to watch him on your way to go to sleep. Yeah, that has been going on for what twenty five years. Yeah. Yeah, every single day. And if, in a, in a way, he's like, okay, there's the commercial for my stand up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. You know what I mean? Cause that's, Non-stop. you know that he always likes stand up better than doing the Seinfeld show. Sure. But look, now, Jay was on every night at 1130, but that's gone now. You know what I mean? Right. Because you don't yeah. watch reruns of talk shows. So it's, it, you really are seeing the guy who was a primetime show. Yes, every still. night, every yeah. night. Yeah, and for that reason, it'll stay relevant through generations but too. Because why young is pe- it still relevant? I don't know, but young you people, know, jokes. Yeah. yeah, jokes. It's funny. You could sit there and watch it, and it, you know, it looks dated. Like there's some yeah. fashion things or whatever, but there's jokes. It's packed with jokes. You're going to laugh during the 20 minutes that you're watching. And That's even though, like you is. say, it's dated, it's still. About friendship and hanging yeah. out and not committing to adulthood. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. all those things are still true. Right. If you're in your 20s and 30s now, like. Yeah, you, for sure. Th- those things don't change. No, the dated things friends. are like him with his phone. Like, he has yeah. a gigantic yeah. phone. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, Walkie talkie. Yeah. yeah, there's one point that he says, uh, my car phone. Which I remember right. yeah. having a cell that I only kept in the car because yeah. the battery yeah. would have run out anyway. So I just kept it plugged in all the time in my Her car. Phone. Isn't that so funny? Like, yeah. it was just a normal term. Yes. Yeah. For a very short time. Not only was I it very short time. <laughs> not only, but it was baller if you had oh, a car yeah. phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? You were big time. Yeah. <laughs> Driving around in your Miata. That, uh, yeah. <laughs> That is the, uh, the, always the thing about, you know, things that if you look back at the things that in the past that you had or wanted, you look at it as shit now. Garbage. You know what I mean? Like at one point, this guy's rich. He has a hi-fi. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that right. was a big deal. Yeah. A Walkman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. If you could only get your head out of that thinking of with modern day stuff. Yeah. Well, I remember like five years ago, everybody wanted to show me their phone and no one does it anymore. Right. No one ever goes, oh, look, with this, I can do it. And I'm like, yeah, it's great. That's <laughs> great. Like, hmm. You have a pretty massive case on yours. I do because I drop my phone a lot. Right. So this is an otter box. And it's like I could drop it in the toilet. I could oh, really? drop it Does from it protect the, the screen. Yeah, the screen has a plastic protector on it. See, this is kind of like a little scraped up, but I could even replace this little screen. And it could go in water. Yeah. Yeah, you could drop it in water and it should be fine. I have never, like, used it like an underwater camera. Like, I don't <laughs> think I would, like, really take it that far. But if but, it goes in and you're yeah, panicked to like pull if it you're, out. Because I got it because I was going on a canoe trip. So I was like, <laughs> if it goes in, mm-hmm. within a few seconds, I should be able to grab it. But right. then you, it, do, it fits in no pocket. <laughs> That's the problem. Like, it doesn't really fit in your back pocket. Yeah, no, it's so massive. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that just reminded me. Show Tom the sea lion video. Oh, yeah. Before we wrap oh, yeah? this up, you, you got a sea lion video. It's just, well, I know that you're a big sea lion fan. We all it always are. happen. Yeah, 
Yeah. And you love them and you have kids. I think it's going to be the name of my next album. (laughs) (laughs) How far away do you know when you're going to be doing specials and albums? Do you... Is that something that's always a date in the future for you? Or? No, I do it purely yeah. by when it's ready. When it's ready? Yeah. yeah. I'm always working hard to get the next one, but I'm not. Uh, there's been so many awful specials put out by people who think you have to do it every year, and they're not ready. I, so I, I'd rather it be ready. This is some people. I don't know. It might be Asia or something, but they see a sea lion. You know how much fun that is. So much fun. Yeah. <laughs> so happy. And there's like. Oh, she's so happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he kissed you. He's like, I'm so cute. Oh my god! By the way, I do this exact thing if I'm anywhere that there's sea lions at. I'll stop and. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Holy shit! Oh my god! <laughs> Is that the craziest thing? Oh, oh. I sat right? her yanked her into the water with such power. Oh my god! The force and speed. <laughs> like, would you ever expect that? So wow. Now, by the way, first time the sea lion's ever done that, or first time it's ever been filmed? Because I bet filmed. Because yeah. that sea lion looked like he knew exactly how to pull this gimmick off. Oh yeah. My god. Just stop it when she's <laughs> holding <laughs> her wow. face. <laughs> Her face like she shocked. doesn't even know what's happening to her right now. Oh I, man. I think it's amazing, like you'll see like a couple seconds before, her arms and legs stay on her dock as yeah. her body is being she pulled is away. Just so <laughs> I love how he's kissing you. Yeah. Yay. Get closer. Oh, yeah. Yay. I love sea lion. Dear God. Whoever rescued her was uh fast. Yeah, that he was, was faster uh, than the sea lion. Yeah, that was like her dad or grandfather. Yeah, that guy <laughs> yeah, was. Yeah, look at that shot. He was not messing around. Like you could see from her hair. <laughs> look at yeah. her hair, like how hard that pool was. That is amazing. Thank you so much for showing me. Yeah, that. this is the best. That is the best. <laughs> I, I and now I like sea lions even more. Yes, me too. Uh Chris, give Mr. Tom Papa a plug, even though he doesn't need it because he sells out because he's a big star. Come to Papa Live is happening at the Village Underground tomorrow, Tuesday, May 23rd at 8 p.m. You go to ComedyCellar.com for tickets and all information. And my new uh, special actually is um, just moved to Hulu and Amazon. Sweet. So Human cool. Human Mule is on those places. We'll see you next time, buddy. There he goes. He's <laughs> hiding underneath his Woody Allen hat. <laughs> we don't know him anymore. Max! Max! I'll see you guys with new shirts next time. <laughs> Tom Papa. You guys are the best. <laughs> it's the Bennington Show. Uh, tomorrow night, I'm doing this uh, benefit at the stand uh, for kids with cancer and a really great lineup up there. A bunch of our buddies. Chris, do you have all the names with you? Because I get a lot of Papa's show he in does. front of me. He does have the names. He gave me the nod. <laughs> I will have those names in one moment. I had them earlier, but uh, we're having some kind of computer problem here. Uh, yeah. All right, no worries. Uh, but come out to that. Uh, you got it, Chris? It is Mr. Ron Bennington. Thanks. Dan Soder, Sherrod Small, Tim Dillon, Annie Letterman, Mark Norman, and more. And more. Nice. All tomorrow night at the stand at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. I'm going to go to that. All right, cool. I mean, it seems like you have to, just because you said you would. For the children. (laughs) That's why I'm doing it. For the children. Uh, Big SNL weekend. Three people out now at SNL. Two they mentioned before, and then uh, one the day after. But I kind of felt bad that they didn't do a big goodbye on this show. Yeah, I mean, I know that some, you know, every time that people leave, it's kind of varying degrees of goodbyes sometimes. Uh, I mean, remember Kristen Wiig got like a whole song and dance number. She got, this, she got to dance with fucking um, Mick Jagger and then all the other cast members who were crying. Yes. And then other times it's just like somebody gives them a little shout out yeah. at the closing. But this was absolutely nothing. Now, um, you know, you saw that they were kind of in more sketches. Yes. However, Sashir is the Mato, who we didn't, I didn't know was leaving until the right. next morning. I wouldn't have said she was on a ton of sketches, 
Um, you know, I, not it, as many as Bobby. It didn't look like they quite knew. Maybe she told them after. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but uh, Bobby is going after nine years. He's going to have his own TV show. And then Vanessa Bayer also uh, left. And then Sashir was, yeah, like almost like a weird add-on. Who knew? Uh, Vanessa Bayer has already signed on as a spokesperson for Bear Aspirin. Nice. Um, this is a good gig Vanessa for her. Vanessa Bayer right. Aspirin. <laughs> hey, um, hey, I'm the Bear Aspirin. And it's, uh, it's a very weird thing because, like, you never know. Like, is it, like, did they leave because it's... That just bent like it ran its course. Did they get pushed out? You, it's almost well, like nine and seven thing. years is like when you look at that. That's twice as much as when Bill Murray was on the show. Yeah, it used to be at year four you were like freaking out if you were still there. Well, and now be it's be like Bobby's the fifth longest of all time. Yeah, and so Sheer, I would say for her. I just kind of feel like they never figured out how to use her. Because, like, when she would be in something, I'd be like, oh, yeah, she's clearly super funny and very talented. But, you know, sometimes I, like, I feel like they don't find that thing that the writers or Lorne, you know, gets that push behind them. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you find it and it works for a year or two, and then you got to figure out what to do next. Yeah. Uh, You know, it's just like when he brought Drunk Uncle back at one point. That was like... A giant character, and then people are like, "Yeah, I saw drunk." <laughs> <laughs> you know? Good. Um, so and also the five timers club. There's just too many five timers now. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. The big deal should, I guess, now moved up to ten timers club. I think you've got to go ten because yeah. I I feel like they're inducting someone like every every week, every other week. They it just seems did, like they the last two weeks it was a five timer. Uh, the Rock did a good job again, though. I um, agree. He did do it. Not as big as Mrs. Uh, Melissa McCarthy in terms of ratings, though. Yeah, really? that makes yeah. sense because she's had so much excitement around her SNL performances this year. But, yeah, I would agree that he's, Ron- he's solid every time he does the show. He, he is. And I would like to bust fucking Vito's balls and tell, say that he's not. But he is. And I honestly, it's funny that there was so much controversy because I honestly thought that that robot sketch was like, one of his best yeah. moments of the whole night. Yeah. Like his delivery he on it. He played it so dry. Was so, yeah, so dry and so matter of fact when, that I thought it was hilarious. When he just said, well, I decided to go into a different direction with this, that for some reason that line I just like laughed out at. But I didn't like that they did the exact same sketch, the Bobby Moynihan one. They did the exact same thing last time, like. Same premise, same yes, setup. They, yeah. they do that all the time, though, when they get these five times. But, like, that one was, it. Was, they didn't change anything up. Like, at least with Omeletteville, they'll be like, no, it's Pizzaville or something like that. <laughs> well, I think the reason why they did that is they're lazy. <laughs> and it was a sketch for Bobby, too, right. as well as for the wrestling fans. Now, I'm interested, is Jen back there right now? I'm interested to see what Jen thought of the second song that Katy Perry did, where she had Migos on the stage with her. Did you see this, Jen? Jen, come on in the dish anyway. Yeah, come on in even the dish. A, even if you haven't, just come yeah. to dish. Come dish, dish up and dish. Oh. Put on your headphones, Jen got the news. To the by, by the way, unlike the boys, Jen is casual but cute today. Yes. Yeah. You've yeah, got a good look a, going yeah, for I, you. I and your hair looks very good. For a rainy day, that's good hair. Oh, <laughs> I, I was in the rain today. Yeah. But it was a nice cool rain. Cool yeah. rain. Felt good. <laughs> Felt like I'm alive. <laughs> what yeah. were you asking, Jen? So Saturday, Migos came on stage with Katy Perry because like, they did like a little like... Thing on like a song that she's doing and I had this moment where Jen and I saw Migos do a what do you call oh, it yeah. like an album release yeah. party here at Sirius <laughs> and I felt very cool I felt very street <laughs> but I was there and I was felt like immediate street cred gone like it because was just like Katie? yeah like there was something about this song and you'll have to go back and see it 
maybe I fast you would forward dig it. to both. But it was not good. Really? It just was like very awkward, very weird. <laughs> and I was like, this thing is not working. And it she just looked like they were dating one of the members. What? Yeah. And there and it's like there's one cute one there and she's dating one of the uglier ones. <laughs> Like, he's Ouch. not that cute. You really do this. <laughs> she is you this. hard. He's, he's just not that cute. But that's yeah. probably why, you know, like, they're dating. She's like, oh, she come should get back with John Mayer. Yeah, definitely. Oh, it looks this is This is the thing where, like, she's laying on the table. And also, the main line of this is, in the course is bon appetit. It's not something that... It's just, like, not a very musical thing. I think... Is bon appetit kind of like saying fuck appetit? Bon appetit's like saying, like... Like, bone me? <laughs> I think it's like, eat me. It's okay. the whole idea. So the answer is yes, Katy Perry. <laughs> but they do a thing where they get up on the table with her, and it's a very uncomfortable moment where I'm just like... I'm not sure this works. But they were uncomfortable. Remember when we saw them at the album release and they didn't even know like who produced it? Like yeah, they were so they were, they were asking the <laughs> questions. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. They were, <laughs> look at look at Katie's dance. Give me a little volume on these guys. <laughs> yeah, this is not and I just immediately went, Man, I, I felt like I had some something to brag about. Like, yeah, I was uh, hang on. <laughs> and I was like, oh. I think that she, that uh, she should cut her hair shorter. <laughs> I, I feel like she looks like long. Miley Cyrus there. Yeah, like, that's Miley her. Cyrus. That's kind of her new thing. It's, it's just <laughs> Miley hair. I heard Miley was kind of treating it up last night. Yeah. I didn't see any of that because I got my Sunday night shows. Yeah, I didn't see it either. I'm now locked in with American Gods. You love it? No, I wouldn't say that. You're I'm locked saying. in, though. I am, just... I'm following the story. Following the story. And I've also picked up Mad Dogs on uh, Amazon. Mad Dogs. What's, What's Mad, Mad Dogs? These guys uh, go down to Belize. They're kind of like aging dude bros. And they get caught up in the whole fucking drug gun culture down there. I like the sound of this. It's entourage. It's middle-aged entourage. <laughs> of drugs. That's good. Yeah. That does sound good. Michael Imperioli is one of the guys. Ooh. And I'm definitely in. And the other guy, I can never remember his name. He's the bald-headed guy, and he was like the bad boyfriend in Titanic. Oh, uh, uh, Billy Zane. Yes, the yeah. great Billy Zane. We were on him with the elevator one time, and it was really awkward because <laughs> he was, was in, he was in like a full like white suit yeah, with Billy like Zane a really nice so... fedora, but he didn't get on on the serious floor. He got on on like a random NBC floor. So everybody in the elevator was like, "What's what's this guy doing on the elevator right now?" <laughs> well, NBC is a big entertainment fucking thing as well. The serious. <laughs> Uh, it's not like he got on to one of the other fucking weirdo like Morgan Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> that no, you would know, shock me. You need some money, though. You know what I mean? Let's move this money around. All right, let's let uh, Jen uh, dish a little bit. What are the big stories? Okay, well, speaking of the Billboard Music Awards mm -hmm. last night, uh, Drake, he won like 13 awards. He broke the record. Congratulations, Drake. Way to go. He beat it. <laughs> he beat Adele out. And um, so... Kate Beckinsale was presenting him with one of his awards. Yeah. And I remember like seeing it live and it was kind of awkward. I knew people were going to talk about it because he was like eyeing her before she gave him the award. And then when he was walking off, she was kind of, he was like touch touching her lower back. And I was like, huh, this looks a little sketchy. So then the rumors, right when I go online, it's like, oh, Drake hits on Kate Beckinsale. But she has a famous boyfriend. Well, she so was married. She's she going through a divorce right now. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Look, so. let me tell you. I don't. Everybody should. Kate Beckinsale to me is the fucking queen of the harbor. Yeah, yeah. One. She's <laughs> the harbor elected a queen, <laughs> and then by harbor, I mean celebrity harbor. You're all the ones, but she's gorgeous. No, no she's I'm so sense. beautiful. I can't. But Drake also see. knows like doing this, he gets more people talking about him yeah. than how many of these dumb awards. Uh, yeah, I mean, there he's, like, kissing her on the hand. Like, she looks like she could be taken. But by the him. thing is, I know for a fact she used to call him on her, on her cell phone. Am I not playing? All right, I like that story. Keep dishing. So, uh, like, everybody's talking about this whole Scarlett Johansson, Colin Jost hookup that happened on Saturday after her appearance on SNL. Well, first of all, congratulations, Colin. Yeah, yeah that's, that's big... huge. <laughs> But if you were ScarJo, him or Che? 
Wow. I don't know like, how to make the ladies think. I'd go straight Che. Um, uh, yeah, that would be my preference. However, yeah. I will say when I was lo- when I was there at SNL and Jost came out, I was like, oh, yes, I, I totally get it. Like, there's something about him in person. Didn't he already have a famous girlfriend? I don't know if he did. Quincy Jones's daughter. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Rashida Jones? Rashida Jones, yes. Wow. Um, yeah. That's fucking huge. And well, so Scar Joe. Yeah. You have them both of them. Yeah, that's. You know? They were like making out, I guess, at the after party. That's odd. Oh, yeah, that's what that's I got. The, that, you have to be drunk <laughs> to make out at the after oh, party. Oh, my God. That's really intense. But I will tell you something. He's a Staten Island boy. He's an Ivy League boy. She'll fucking snap him like a breadstick. <laughs> she has wrecked motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. Like if you're Colin Jost and you know that she dated, I don't know, I'll just throw out one, Sean Penn. Yeah. You're not going to mm. fucking yeah, not, measure up. It's going to be difficult. Yes. yes. It's not going to be good. But you know what? You take your shot. You enjoy your time and know you're just going to be one of the dudes. <laughs> this might, <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, if he can, if he has the stretch just to go, I'll take this back to the writer's room and just treat it as a thing. But he's going to fall in love. And right. he's going to get fucking snapped. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's also going through a breakup right now. Always. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Always, for years. She, <laughs> she's a serial dater. She's a serial dater, and she sometimes even marries some of those guys. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't mean jack shit to her. <laughs> <laughs> I saw her at a um, at an event that we did at Sirius up in, in uh, Harlem. Um I guess it was the Springsteen show. I'm trying to remember which show. So she's coming up to the bar. She's the tiniest little thing. And she makes sure that <laughs> she doesn't really make eye contact with any of the fellas. Yeah. Because she's like Medusa. <laughs> they could turn the stone. <laughs> right. Like she's probably, like if she would have looked at you, you were like, oh, I'm next. I'm the one you love because I loved you. <laughs> so she has to, she has to go through her life making sure she doesn't do that to fellas. But tiny. Shockingly tiny. Wow. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I would have thought she. Tall. Yeah, I no. would have thought she was pretty tall. I was surprised how huh. small she was. I don't want to say Gail small, but it felt like it, <laughs> it, was, it was in that. Wow, I never would people use that. that as a measurement. Yeah. <laughs> she's not Gail small. I mean, she's she? short. not as short as you, but she's really, really freakishly she's, short. Yeah, <laughs> she's so short I threw up. <laughs> uh, I'm enjoying these dishes. These are small dishes. Today. I know, it's, nice yeah. little amuse bouche. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never learn that word. I've heard you use it before, and I want it to, but I can't. So your prediction is that they're gonna break up? It was just a one time. Up. I think it's a one-time hookup if he's lucky. She went back and crushed him in his fucking <laughs> apartment. Probably he took her to her apartment, but I don't know if he could do the long run. I don't know if it's the best thing for him. Right. I think I think they're going to end up dating. Because the fact That's, that they made out at an after party in front of everybody That means you're shows. fucked up. That's the kind of shit Chris Stanley does. Yeah, that's my shit. Well, like, that's could, you, could you imagine if you were just like friends with Joe's and you're just like, what the? Like looking over and seeing that? No. Like, he's doing it. Can I, he's all grown up. Can he's I tell you? Up. He's grown up. He's grown up. I can't imagine being his friend and seeing that because as a viewer, I'm just thrown. <laughs> I feel like if I was his friend... I would try to tackle him and fucking get him out of there. <laughs> I don't know what you're getting yourself you're into. You're playing with fire, young man. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in Staten Island prepared you for this. <laughs> All right, another small dish. So another dish story is uh, Ted Cruz. What, um, he did Stephen Colbert's show when he was running uh, for president. And it came out that he asked Stephen Colbert to humanize him. <laughs> Humanized him Why? as a person. I don't this understand. Is so that. funny because I'm guessing he must have said that because people were saying that about Trump, that like him being on other shows. So well, Ted Cruz is not a human. <laughs> I mean, the only human that you compare Ted Cruz to was Nixon, where they would act like you know. I'm moving like people do. <laughs> you know? Look at me. I have fingers just like you. Or There's like, something inhuman about him. Or it sounds like something that, you know, someone on his staff said to him, like, look, this is important. He needs to humanize you. And then he went out and, like, please humanize, humanize me. me. <laughs> like, you're not supposed to say that. And that's what Stephen Colbert told him. He was like, uh, you can't just ask people to humanize you. <laughs> he had that Zodiac Killer thing going for him for a while. 
<laughs> was supposed he to be. Was the Zodiac killer. The Zodiac killer. <laughs> well, were they saying that his dad was the Zodiac killer? Or no, his dad Hesseto? killed Kennedy. Oh, yeah, his dad oh, killed yeah. Kennedy. He was the Zodiac killer. <laughs> he was the Zodiac killer. I forgot about and that. people kept showing up with signs and stuff at Ted Cruz rallies that said Ted Cruz is the Zodiac killer. <laughs> I hate the internet. <laughs> I feel how hot my phone feels. Hmm, that's a concern. Yeah, it's very warm, and you weren't charging it. No, it was sitting in my pocket. Am I going to be one of those people that his phone blows up and and burns? Yeah, it's just droid. Droid people. That happens, too. Uh, the the it's like a piece of shit droid. That's <laughs> this shit gets real hot sometimes. <laughs> so our like next... Uh, <laughs> Stop interrupting, Chris. Shut the fuck up, Chris. <laughs> Sorry, the fuck up. <laughs> no, you're right to tell him to shut the fuck up. He deserved it. Chris, you fixed another problem today? Uh, that problem I found when I have an answer at the end, end of business day is what I just heard. My business day ends <laughs> in an hour five. <laughs> so what you're saying is five o'clock? Five o'clock. Why wouldn't you just say that? Did, did somebody use that term with you? Yes. Uh, yes, I did. So I was uh, regurgitating it. <laughs> humanize. Please humanize me. The other night I was hosting at the um, at the stand and Mike Lawrence was there and I bring him up. And he does the pound at the beginning of the night because mm-hmm. he doesn't shake hands. And then um, after that, I'm pounding everyone else. And they're all doing paper rock on the top of it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, and they're I'm like, like oh. and then people are going like this. I didn't know that you would pound it. And I go, don't. Mike Lawrence got me into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is highly awkward. <laughs> now I'm just gripping your fist. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was weird. By the way, Sherrod will always say in my ear, I love you. I love you so much, Ronnie. Oh my God, that's so sweet. It's odd though. <laughs> it's so, and then so I, intimate. And I will sweet. Re- respond with, I love you too, Sherrod. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's odd? No, no I, I think, think I'm so... responding to people too much. <laughs> I'm trying to humanize myself. You are. <laughs> this is what humans do. <laughs> we'll be a human by end of day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I forgot this too. At the end of his show the other night, Shrab was just like singing and dancing with his song, and then I jumped on stage and started dancing with him. And I feel in my heart that the audience laughed too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Like, look, Grandma is dancing. <laughs> oh, my God. You weren't supposed to laugh that hard. I go, a, a happy chuckle. Yeah. <laughs> but this wasn't a punchline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's dish. So, uh, Vito's favorite person, Ariel Winter. And oh, that is your favorite person <laughs> from uh, Modern Family. <laughs> mm-hmm. Favorite character. <laughs> and uh, Ka- my favorite, Kylie Jenner, are in a little bit of a feud right now because Kylie said that she's constantly stealing her look. Oh, oh that is yeah. so interesting. First of all, I don't even think that they would... When you're a Kylie Jenner, right? Yeah. You're a trendsetter. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that a good thing when... Yeah, don't you want people... Untrendy people... If you have a makeup line, the whole idea is steal my look, take my look. Like right, me right let's now. see. Let's <laughs> take me this Kylie picture. lip kit. <laughs> so look, now who's who? That's Ariel Winter. That's Kylie. Okay. All right, so here they're both wearing yellow bathing suits. Yeah. Yep. Who wears it better? All right, now it's a butt to butt shot. Interesting. That's I Ariel can't really Winter. tell. Actually, I know that picture. <laughs> That's really? Kylie. Yeah, that's All right, Ariel. Wait, let's take it to the top and say who wears it better. Okay. Let's actually. Okay. And Chris, I know you, you're you free to the end of the business day. <laughs> <laughs> so left is who? Left is Ariel Winter. Right is Kylie. Who wears it better? Pick. Kylie. Kylie where, wins this round. Kylie. I'm going to give that to Kylie, too. Vito? The circular thing is an issue for me, but <laughs> I'm still going to go with my girl, Ariel Winter. All right. So we know that you're a hometown voter no matter what. Um, this is butt shot from the back. I'm going to go first here. I'm going to agree with Vito's uh, hometown pick. Uh, Ariel Winter, where's that one better? I will give this one to Ariel Winter uh, again, although it was close because Kylie's hair looks really good from the yeah. back. But I think better pose. <laughs> yeah. She's got 
uh, heels under butt. Yeah, she's butt popping the butt. Yeah. yeah, I feel like she's trying too hard. I'm going to go with Kylie. Yeah, Kylie looks I, natural. Like by the way, took I want people to try hard. <laughs> uh, I'm a Kylie girl through and through. I like her ass better than this. So, so. And this picture, let's just, you just can't hometown this. Or else yeah, we can't I'm have surprised because yeah. I went with like that, like for me, it was butt, hard better, to deny that. Butt. Yeah, the ass of this one. Uh, all right, let's go to the next one. So we're tied 1-1. One, one. I know All one right. looks good here. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to be totally honest, I'm going to give this one to Ariel Winter. Yes. I'm going Kylie on this one. I think mm. Kylie's look is kind of better. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on with Ariel's hair. Just pull back. I don't know. It's just like people pull so their weird, hair like, back. Yeah, don't just, act like I they don't, don't like it as much. And what I like the, the the big hip look. It's hard for me to like. Compare these two because one looks like they're going to like an awards, and then mm. Kylie looks like she's just going out for coffee, maybe a meeting. Mm. But I'll have to go with Ariel Winter because she looks a little, just because she looks a little more put together. Kylie, she looks like she's going Chrissy? to the mall. <laughs> uh, Kylie looks really pale. I don't like that. I'm just sort of being like nice and tan. <laughs> so give me Ariel Winter. <laughs> All right. He came back around. Yeah, I knew I could bully him into being on my side, <laughs> back in like he hometown. <laughs> go ahead. All right, so we got uh, Ariel over here. That Kylie doesn't even look like Ariel Winter. Yeah. Are yes, we does. sure that that's Ariel Winter? <laughs> that looks nothing like I'm gonna her. I'm going to give, uh, based on, I'm going to give it to Kylie on this one. Yeah, Kylie's like crazy foxy in this one. But by the way, I don't even think that that's close enough of the same look for anyone the bitch. I'm going to say that about most of these. Yeah, and again, a trendsetter, you do want people to... Take the and trend. The, yeah. If Take not, a, you're not a trend center. You're yeah. just like a weirdo doing your own thing. Yeah, which is a great person to be, but then you can't. Not for sit. me. I like trend <laughs> I like branders and I like trend centers. I know people have been asking me about this lip <laughs> kit, so. <laughs> well, um, Kylie, I guess, said that she's proud of her unique style and, and it's annoying that Ariel is constantly stealing her look. And then Ariel clacked clap back and said, I don't Photoshop any photo. This is the real me. Basically saying that Kylie photoshops oh, most of her know. picture. Interesting. So, I mean, looking at both of them, I feel like Kylie's is a little more cleaned up. I know, but I will say this. Ariel Winter took the fucking high road and I think one, the thing, because A, you're bringing it up Right. I don't think that you proved your fact that she's copying off you. Yeah. And then two, oh, you Photoshop? No, you shouldn't be throwing rocks at all. <laughs> but, I mean, to me, you would think that the Jenner would think that they're at a higher place. You don't punch down in this business. I know. I and mean, by this business, I mean show. Show business. I know. And then I'm just thinking, like, well, why don't you say the same to, like, half the girls your brother-in-laws are dating? Like, That's everyone good. looks like her. All yeah. the guys that they're yeah. dating. And then, like, they, they all seem to gravitate towards, like, mini Kylie's. By the way, they, they found Kanye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think he was in a dumpster up in Wyoming somewhere. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it was okay. He was just, uh, just, he was repeating that bitch ass family's cray <laughs> over and over. But I think he, uh, Jen called it last week that he's, he goes away to try to figure out what he can rhyme. That's his, yeah. He needs to get away from the, the family and yeah. the craziness. I hope he comes at Area Winter pretty hard. <laughs> winter is coming is what he's, <laughs> he's, not, he's put together. You're not that's a winter, good. you're a looser. <laughs> right, you got any more dishes? That's our, that's Those our are dish. good dishes Those today. are good dishes. <laughs> now, I'm going to dish on something, this picture that I saw. It's up on the eye bang. It looked like Trump has got his hands on some weird <laughs> orb. This looks like maybe the last scene of Indiana Jones before people's eyes start <laughs> melting. <laughs> so bizarre. And it had, like, the internet a buzz yesterday because everyone was going, But what is he doing? I don't understand what this is. So Raising this is, Satan? <laughs> so he's, this is in Saudi Arabia, and it's supposed to be at some sort of anti-terrorist thing. Yeah. event um but then they had the leaders come forward and all put their hands on this glowing <laughs> globe and it's so creepy looking just the way it's reflecting off of uh our president <laughs> is very bizarre <laughs> i mean and like the first thought i had was like imagine this was obama <laughs> like yeah. they would be going They'd be i him. knew it <laughs> <laughs> they would be going nuts. But I'm 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 great 
Uh, I'm so happy with Trump right now because he's finally, uh, you know, getting arms to the 9-11 people, the terrorists. So we didn't have that then. <laughs> and again, this is also the country not on the no-fly list. They were not on that, the, uh, the list that he had put together. And that's exactly where the terrorists from 9-11 came from. <laughs> they're like, but they're okay. They're cool. Uh, you guys like stand-up comedy, right? Yes. I do. The iBang has the... Uh, first episode of I'm Dying Up Here. That's going to be the, I think, Showtime show. And it's stand up, kind of based on what was happening in the 70s. Uh, I've seen a couple episodes, so I want you guys to watch the first episode tonight and then we'll dish about it. Nice. Oh, <laughs> I like to say, think that I put out a, a large plate. <laughs> it's a little bit it's bigger like a than platter. a dish. Yeah, the platter is what it is. Uh, let's try to guess right now if Chris owns a platter. Is like if we went to Chris's house to watch football with him, would he be able to put cheese and crackers on a platter, or would he come walking out with a box of crackers and a hunk of cheese? <laughs> I my guess is uh he's gonna at least have maybe one large plate. Left over from what his mom <laughs> Yeah, uh, maybe. That's gotta be my That's guess. actually gotta be the only way that he'd have a platter. <laughs> I'm gonna say that he has one. Chris Stanley? I do not own a platter. Your mom I, never had a platter? My mom owned the platter, but I threw it out. I never thought I'd really be hosting. So I <laughs> I don't think I need a charcuterie plate. It was like it was a shitty plate. It was just a giant white, too heavy fucking Giant plate. Yes, I didn't like but it. you understand that you would put cheese and <laughs> uh, fruit and some crackers on there. I when you had one of your Tinder girls over. I don't. I don't. Some post <laughs> fucky fuck. <laughs> <laughs> some fine cheeses. Yeah, you need a cheese. You need a cheese board. Like Evan. Evan makes those beautiful cheese boards. Remember he gave me one. Yeah. You need a nice cheese board. I mean, let's go. Sh- Are you enjoying that? Oh my way? god, it's so it's so beautiful because like it's it's like a cutting board, but yeah. I won't use it as that. Like I'm only using it as a cheese board because it's That's too smart. pretty. It's too pretty. That's smart. And you like to put some things on there, right? I do. Like I'll put like some cheeses, some crackers, little grapes. By the way, I don't think anything <laughs> looks better than when if you have a big wheel of cheese. <laughs> oh, so good. And I know people don't like to do it because it's a lot of cheese. Yeah. But it's like, well, oh, a whole wheel. <laughs> this is great because I don't have to worry that we're going to run out. Yeah. We have this whole wheel here. <laughs> um, and I might have cheese and crackers and fruit for dinner tonight. That's, I might go in that direction. That's my most favorite meal is like cheese, crackers, some like I'm going to just ask you this. Who invented that as a meal in our family? I know that you enjoyed it. Yeah. Enjoyed it or invented it. <laughs> that was my idea. And now it's your niece's favorite. Yes. And I believe she calls it an Uncle Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's not your niece. It's your cousin. No. I get very fucking confused. I know. You. you call all my little cousins. But that's because like we have like an age difference with a lot of us. She and I am hmm. like the, the closest that I would say cousin because we're close in age. You're right. But a lot of the little ones, it's fine to say niece or nephew. But I even call Vito your niece. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I call you Aunt Gail. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have the most perfect aunt name. Did like, you? is there any name that fits with Aunt Gail? Auntie is- Gail. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Zizzy Gale, uh, which you should know that term, being Italian. Here, plug me in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vito, the other day, you fucking plugged me in on your shitty rope one, <laughs> and it was fucking useless. I was, yes. I was told later on, and I felt really terrible about it. Yeah. And I remember, I d- wrote down something, remember to fire Vito. No, <laughs> I was write so it mad down. about it. I found that note. Statue of limitations. I said, Ron, did you mean this? I found this note. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> Just, I meant it at the time, if that means anything to you. <laughs> did you guys uh, like that Unmass uh, that we did with Dimitri Martin? Yes, that yes. was that was a blast. Really, really great. Because Chris made me feel bad about it. What, Chris? I never want to make you feel bad about anything. That was a that was a great one. Mm, okay, I'll tell you off air what Chris said to me about it. I would love to hear what he yeah, said. I was actually depressed most of the weekend, and I made sure that Chris did not get any updates. Mm. For some stuff, so he's not here. The benefit package that he was supposed to be getting. I don't. Know, I don't understand why you would do that because we had a I, great time and it was so fun. I just thought to him, 
I'll take care of it. I'll make sure he doesn't get the benefit. That's part, of the That's part of his deal. Oh, and by the way, I want to... So you got no more health insurance, Chris. Oh, this really, that's not good news. <laughs> Revenge is a meal best served against the benefit. <laughs> Don actually said to me, so are you sure Chris doesn't care about his health thing? I go, he no. doesn't want it. Yes, don't even bring no. it up to him. I said, if you bring it up to him, I'll go crazy. <laughs> I don't want to go back to the clinic. Hey, don't you like that Tom Papa? I love Tom he's Papa. He's fun. Yeah, he's very fun to hang out with. Yeah. He he's took his shine to Vito. He did. I don't know whether you know I, did, I want to go. I want him. I was trying to hint at him like, I got to go to Men's Warehouse. Maybe you'd want to come with me. No, that's that's maybe, yeah, that's maybe, yeah, that's a line. step of the line. He's a big fucking star. Yeah. He's friends with other stars like uh, Don Rickles, uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. And me. No. No, dude, no. you're not a fucking star. He took you're a shine that to you. That's different. I want, to, I want to make it shine brighter. Just <laughs> fucking be cool. It's that pushiness that you have yeah. that shoved him away. You're right. And I need to just like play it real cool, not reach out to him. Next time I see him, give him a head nod. Dude, uh, <laughs> too cool. No, yeah. I don't want to just do you that. Get to a fun- <laughs> Who are you, Fonzie? Why don't you drive past this fucking show on your motorcycle? <laughs> <laughs> Does it make sense? <laughs> oh. And he's like, was that Vito? <laughs> he's, he's just like standing there with the red light. He's like, hey, I gotta go. <laughs> Coming down the steps of the uh, underground. <laughs> 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 Tom's like, well, why don't you come in for the show? I can't. I gotta go. <laughs> I'll catch you around, maybe. Got my bike. <laughs> I'm uh, seeing a guy about a dick sucking <laughs> sesh. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I think I do. I think I literally know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Let's dish. Yeah, what else is in your wheelhouse today? Uh, well, I would say there's this uh article that I read. Good. It's up on the iBang uh, about these people who are living out in the North Carolina woods, out mm-hmm. in the middle of nowhere, off the grid, completely off the grid. Now that's down to the fact of they don't have sugar, coffee, they don't do anything. Yeah. No electricity. Uh, there they are. Like the best part is, like they're all naked at the. Yeah, they're hanging out naked. No, well, they're down at the creek bathing, right? Mm-hmm. But just like at your house, you don't bathe with everybody. So why are they doing it there <laughs> if they're all, just because you're off the grid? You can still <laughs> bathe one at a time. Well, here's the thing: the reason we bathe one at a time is because we have shame. <laughs> shame well, about that. Shame us when you're off the grid. <laughs> so they're saying. They're saying they have no shame and they're just enjoying, they're just, it's no different for them, I guess. I don't have any shame, but I want electricity and Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> How um, long do you think you can live off the grid? It's really difficult because I think the longer I did it, the, you know, the more comfortable I'd no, be. No, just the opposite. You know what I mean? Like, I think it would be hell at first and then eventually, because I've always thought this thing that, like, it would take me no time to just go full Lord of the Flies. Like, if I was, like, shipwrecked or something like that, deserted island with a You're group. You're barely above Lord of the Flies right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it would take nothing to, until I was just, like, like started to, like, dreadlock my hair and run around <laughs> Why don't we, It would we, take we, nothing. Let's do a thing where you write a book about young girls this happened to, and you call it Lord of the Fleas. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Lord of the Fleas. How long could you live that way, Vito? I, I don't think I'd even last a week. I'm a city boy, and, like, I've never even been camping. I would die. But don't you guys think, okay, in in the way that I'm saying, it'd be really difficult at first, but let's say you're doing it a month, then it's just life. Then it just becomes life. I think I'd fuck up week one and I'd, I'd get poisoned or I'd like, I'd fuck with a bear cub. What would you mean? I like that he's like, he can't be trusted with an adorable bear cub. He, everyone's like, get away from that bear cub. Stuff. And he just picks it up. You don't eat poison <laughs> now. Why would you eat poison then? Because I think I'd get hungry and I'd be stressed out and I'd see something and I'd be like, I like mushrooms. They taste good. Yes, at best, that's a good it, kind of worse, poison. Trip. That's right. You're poisoning yourself into self-awareness. <laughs> um, these guys, even in the winter, it goes down to like one or two people top, so they can't handle the winter out there. They, Yeah, they've got, they've got to give up. But they're just enjoying life out there. 
They're just Everything like, that they eat, they raise themselves. They right? raise themselves. Oh. They get in the wild. So they're in a commune type situation. Commune, yeah. <laughs> sure. yeah. Commune. Uh, oh, what is this? Yes, uh, commune. It is, Vito, but it's even a little harsher than Yeah, because like, they also, like, I think hunted bear and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So they were like eating bear meat and deer meat. So it's not just, it's not Keep just going. like a farm in the woods. Um, but they have, I mean, they that like looks pretty sh- rough. Yeah. That looks That's like fucking <laughs> Robin Hood. Yeah, rough. it does. <laughs> that does look like some Robin Hood shit. There they are butchering some. That looks like a deer, deer head there on the left. So they've killed uh, a fawn, though. Yeah, they've killed a deer. They're eating the deer meat. <laughs> Here's this dude. He's wearing just like a little, it's like a little tarp I, over his peach. I can't be around him. <laughs> That's my biggest problem. I'll probably end up knocking that fucker out. He looks annoying. Yeah, he like is. He's, he's like, like one of those guys who acts like really enlightened about something, but then he like mansplains something. <laughs> that like the horrible like feminist bro you're just like yeah not really dude <laughs> he's like actually you guys are doing that wrong <laughs> yeah give us the full definition of mansplaining mansplaining is i think typically they say it when it's supposed to be a man explaining something to a woman that she already knows or would clearly know and he's trying to be like oh let me explain oh, this thing so it'd be like this It'd be like a man, right, going out and talking to women as if they were children. Yeah. That's okay, what that's just, a better way of putting it. Well, that's what I Jen, just did you pick up said. on it the way that I explained it? <laughs> <laughs> You've got it, right? And if you have any questions, come to me. <laughs> My drawers are always open. You know what I'm saying, guys? <laughs> <laughs> now, Vito, do you think that you mansplain at all? Uh, I don't know. I think sometimes I'll try to explain something, but I think I'm just more ignorant than mansplaining where I'm like, oh, no, this is what I think it is. And I end up being wrong about it. You know what? You you probably have more of an open mind. Like he'll say, Gail, explain this to me. So therefore, yeah, he is good that way. Yeah, he likes to learn. Now, Chris, does he mansplain or I don't think he communicates enough. <laughs> That's to hard to say. I don't like think he, he does. does. Like he all explains. <laughs> I, I do. I always feel like if I have to explain, I'm, I'm annoyed. Right. Like I'm furious if I have to say. Here's how something works. Right. I don't think Chris does, and for the exact reason you said, I don't think he communicates enough that he would be the type to go, here's how this thing works. Because that would be somebody who wants to pass upon knowledge to another person. The, the amount of people that I heard, I haven't heard back from Chris yet, was all through the weekend. <laughs> really? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Radio silent? No, He's feel running it. deep. He runs deep. He can't be reached in his submarine. He was busy not betting on that horse. Dude, you should have bet that fucking horse. I can't horse. believe it. Like, immediately I Why was like... Why won't you bet a winner? I've taken chick picks before. They haven't worked out. I, I have once, and it worked out great. So. I don't think you ever got to double fist it. <laughs> I feel like a fucking moron. It's yeah. the first time he told me to go into my daddy deep pockets and bet for Gail. Yeah. And I was like, no. I want to put this. I want to put my own paper on the line. That's how I get the the rush and the excitement. <laughs> I've never bet on a race. It's so fun. I've only bet on. I bet on a dog race at Derby Lane. That was the closest I've ever gotten to betting that on a race. Pretty fun. That was pretty it is fun. fun. It's, a, it's a gorgeous little place too. Yeah. Love that. It's place. weird. Both these guys have been to Derby Lane. That's really weird. At Scales Old uh, Stomping Grounds. I yeah. love that place. I never. I didn't want to leave. Gail was you born. <laughs> I'd say two miles from there. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. I was raised by those dogs. <laughs> well, I have a friend that uh, took one of those dogs, like adopted it, because you can adopt them. Mm-hmm. And he said uh, the first time the dog got out of his yard, it was going like a fucking rocket. <laughs> it was just like He said there was this little, like somebody was opening the gate, and there was this little thing for that, and it was just like... Tsh- it was gone like a fucking bullet, like a blur. <laughs> <laughs> Running down the beach. <laughs> you know, what about you? We never let your stupid fucking mind get involved in anything. Well, so this weekend, went out with some friends to this bar downtown called Fat Cat. And it's known for, like, having all different kinds of, like, games and shit, like shuffleboard, mm-hmm. pool, foosball. But I got into ping pong while I was in the bar downstairs and I've never gotten like drunk 
and played ping pong before. And I didn't <laughs> realize, like, it's a fucking fun bar game. Like, I felt like I was all hyped up. I had tons of energy to run around. I was just <laughs> slamming shit down. And I felt like it was the perfect game to have in a bar. Well, well, first of all, I don't think of even as a bar game. It's like a child's game at first. Yeah. Everybody has one in either their basement or their garage. Can't believe you wouldn't text me once you saw how good I've gotten with the ping pong. I'm fucking I can't crushing. believe that you didn't say this when we were in Austin and they were looking for ping pong players. And I wanted somebody to represent the show. That's a big tournament. I had never really played ping pong before this weekend. And I just got super into it. And I didn't realize. Were you I'm good kinda, at it? I'm kind of good at it. Do you think that you're better than me? Because you see the way I handle it. I think I could take you. We are friends with a world-class ping-pong player who actually went to the Olympics to coach somebody. Judah Freelander is one of the best in the world. And I'm not fucking making that up. Totally serious. He is an unbelievable ping-pong player. I remember once when he came in, he came up to me and he goes... What happened to the uh what happened to that ping pong table you guys have to have used to have here? And I was like, Oh, they got rid of it and he was like, You know, that's a little ridiculous. I feel like it's a good thing to relieve stress for the employees. And I was like, I, I don't know. He's like they should really bring it back. Is there anybody you could talk to about it? I don't think we do that. He will take yeah. a stand. I appreciate that. We need to break your Chris yes. or take it to the limit like the Eagles. We gotta break one more should time. We take it to the limit one more time. If Chris wants us to take it to the limit, we do it. No, we, have, we have to. We should break. We should break one more time. All alone at the end. It's Bennington Show. Chris Stanley got his precious break the way he loves. God, he loves breaks. More than his coworkers. Um, I believe the Skanks show that Chris Stanley healed out on in <laughs> Austin is coming up on Wednesday night. And uh, how do people listen to that, Chris? It'll be available on iTunes and GasDigitalNetwork.com. GasDigitalNetwork.com. But we can just go to iTunes and it's free? And iTunes is free, yes. Interesting. I'm going to do that then. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm excited to check it out because I was not there for that show. So I'm very you interested. You were at Ali Wong that night. I was. Uh, Jen and I had an Ali Wong date. And like the most <laughs> exciting, like literally like sitting in the Lincoln seat. <laughs> Like right in the opera box, looking over, and we're like, "This is quite fancy." That's great, yeah. But this is about Chris right now getting booed in another <laughs> town, and for whatever reason, True. enjoying that. Uh, so that's coming up Wednesday. I guess there'll be a link up on the Interabang dot com. Uh, with this weird rainy weather, I honestly feel like I never woke up today. I get that anytime it's a rainy morning. If I don't feel sunshine, it's like the day it ever started. I just stay in a haze. It's nice, though. It's like staying high. That's why I I couldn't live in the Northwest because I think I would just never quite be awake. I would never quite be a person. No one would humanize me. If I was in the Northwest, I would constantly chop wood. (laughs) (laughs) Damp wood. Mm. (laughs) But up, but up, up. Um, and if I was in the Northwest, I would probably date a vampire or a werewolf, because that happens there. Remember when we did that Bennington Brommer last week, and somebody had me chick, uh, pick between Van Morrison and Jim Morrison? Yes. Is that you that did that, Gail? No, I think, it, I believe it was a caller. Caller? Yeah. Maybe the hardest ever? Yeah. The Doors movie was on this weekend. Oh, was it? I get obsessed with Jim Morrison. I was watching this movie, and it's not a good movie. It really isn't. <laughs> And I said to myself, I bet I would go into a door spiral. And I was. It was like 11 o'clock last night. I'm just, I'm a spy. <laughs> go through the whole fucking thing. I'm like, let me find a door song that I don't like. It's hard for me. That was a difficult one, the Battle of the Morrisons. But I, kn- I, I knew that it was going to be Jim for you. You're the one that they want for the vow. <laughs> A lot of that movie is stupid. It's really funny, though. Like, you can tell when it's, if you pay attention, that when Jim Morrison is singing and when Val Kilmer is singing, because they do a lot of Val in there. Yeah. Um, I remember after seeing that movie, that was, like, my first time really understanding, like, what hallucinogens were. Mm. And I was saying to you and my mom, like, 
So how does it work? Because in my mind, I'm like, well, this is a definite. I definitely want to do this. Mm -hmm. And then like, or you guys were explaining and I was like, wait, but so you don't go a place together? Like, you know how it's like as though they're tripping together right. and they're having a unified experience? And then I remember just being like, so what's the point? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I thought that this was going to be like some unified experience. Like, we all see the same fucking snake. But you're going to have that experience soon with these VR glasses. So you will yes. be able to more or less trip with people. But yeah, it's a good point that you don't, you're not always on the same trip, and you could see, even in that thing, that the other guys weren't on the same trip as Jim. He was always out further. Right. Me. He was always way weirder. But yeah, I was ter- I was like, well, that sounds scary. You're seeing something that no one else is seeing? Forget it. How about when he says to his chick on Thanksgiving, uh, no, I just took some low-grade ass. <laughs> he has to low-grade it, so she won't be. It's just low-grade. That's my favorite scene, too, when he's like, nah, ma, I ain't been drinking. <laughs> I would agree. That's not a. It's not a a great movie, and yet I'll always watch that movie. There are scenes that are fantastic. Yeah, the scenes from Venice are out of this world. Yeah, but overall, you know, I I always thought too watching the Doors movie is that the audience is always way too long, uh, way too old. The band, no matter who the band is, is always. Years older than their audience. Yeah. Like, that's the weird thing. If you're in a band and you're 30, your audience is probably 17, 16 and yes. 17. And that's why, like, all those pop groups, like those, like, you know, boy boy bands and girl groups and all that stuff, Justin Bieber's fans were literally, like, toddlers. They were, like, babies. Yes. So they're just, like, one... Because the whole idea is, like, one day I'll be as cool as this person. Yeah. It doesn't really work. Even if you're 17, your fans are 12. Yes. You know, it just works that way. <laughs> exactly. So a lot of people are like, God, I got stuck into this pop thing. And I'm like, you should have waited five years. <laughs> right. Then your fans would have been 17 willing to grow up with you. Like, for, for example, this is what I think of when I was a little kid, I used to read Seventeen magazine. Mm-hmm. And by the time I was like 16, 17 years old, I would never read that. It would be like so juvenile, the idea of doing that. So it was like. It's like the idea of being 17. It's not for 17-year-olds. No, it's true. It's selling the image of 17. Just like Vito is now older than wrestlers. Isn't that weird? (laughs) He should be stopping. (laughs) All of NXT. (laughs) There's a buddy Dutch. Hey, Dutch. What's up? Hey. Uh, you were just talking about movies, and you referenced the barometer, and I had one that might be a little bit timely and not morbid, but uh, best James Bond theme song, Chris Cornell, You Know My Name, which is underrated, or Shirley Bassey, uh, Goldfinger. Oh, uh, it's Goldfinger. It's not even close. Oh, fuck, bitch. It's not even fucking close. Yeah, Goldfinger. Goldfinger is probably the best that's ever been done. I will disagree. It's not my I, most favorite. Spy Who Loved Me? No. Mm. Let's see if anyone can get it. Live and to let... a kill? No. You're in? What was yours? Live and let die? No. These are all good songs. Yeah. Vito, you got one? I don't know enough James Bond thing. I can't the even think. What okay. are you talking about, man? Skyfall, Adele. She did the last one. No, although Who I did it? think it was very good. It was Who good. is it? You only... Live twice. Oh. Miss Nancy Sinatra. Let's put it up. I think is the fucking best. Like I love that song so much. You and Goldfinger is a great song. But you know what? I don't think you only live twice ever wins any of these. It's a great song. Robbie Williams ripped this fucking yeah. song off. I'm going to go to uh, Rolling Stone has put together 
Oh, man, are they going to make me clip through it? Because I'm not going to do that. I like when it's all one page. One page, that shit. And at least give me the option of one page. I don't want to sit there, click through each one. I like when they give the option, you know? That's when they realize they're not total pieces of garbage. They're not living alone? Exactly. <laughs> man, there's so many of these things. Like, A View to Kill, Duran Duran's, came in 12th. Really? Yeah. I would have thought that'd be higher. Um, for your eyes only came in number eight. Thunderball was number seven. All coming out of Rolling Stone. Nobody does it better, which has the great line like heaven above me, the sky, the spy who loves me. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the one? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's in that one. Yeah, like heaven above me, the spy who loved me. You're not even, you're faking that whole thing. <laughs> Diamonds are forever came mm -hmm. in number five. That's the great Shirley Bassey. Adele's Skyfall came number four, but that'll fall as life, as times go by. It'll Skyfall. You Only Live Twice was number three. Wow. Whoa. That riff was so great. Live and Let Die was number two and Goldfinger. Was number one. Well, Goldfinger is insane. Like, that song is just Put that like, up. Goldfinger! <laughs> Finger! Wait, let's stop it for a second. Stop it, please. She fucking rhymed Goldfinger with Coldfinger. It's like Coldfinger! <laughs> you gotta come up with a, a rhyme that has lingering. <laughs> you don't get to rhyme the first part of this. Just with a, just check all the lyrics for uh, Cranberries Linger. I'm sure you're going to come up with, mm. wrapped around your finger. Do you have to let it linger? Mm. Uh, but I'm surprised yours came in number three and it's sweet. Yeah. Your song is great. I, lo I love Nancy and it, so it never much. jumps out at me. I always go with the more popular ones because I'm an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, how great is that the one that like, he used that in uh, Millennial. Is it in Millennial? No, I'm not sure which one he used it. Yeah, he did use it in Millennial. It's so good. What's he doing? Uh, Clayton in New Jersey. Hey, uh, honorable mention, Spectre by Radiohead. What was this one? So I think originally they were going to do the song for Spectre. And then something happened, and they ended up going with a different artist. But they wrote a song, and it's it's great. I don't even think I know. Yeah, this. I don't. You, Chris, I'm not sure. No, I know the, the. I think the last Bond was Spectre, but. All right, let's hear it. Uh, yeah, check it out. Are you shaking your head, Chris? It doesn't work for me. Why? I don't know. I feel like it should have been kicked in uh, faster. I don't know. I, I don't think it works as a Bond theme. You're looking for poppy song. I you said you were the yeah. Radiohead guy. And then you you brought up the song Creep. <laughs> so I, I guess I fucked up. And once again, I got you and Dave mixed up. He's the Radiohead guy, right? He has the Radiohead tattoo, yeah. Yeah, but you're not. Do you like Radiohead? Yeah, I like Radiohead. I just don't like this song. But you picked the one song that doesn't sound like Creep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Creep is their weird poppy song that doesn't sound like the rest of their stuff. Uh, it doesn't sound like a Bond theme to me either. Yeah. Though. I'm also interested in how many Bond songs I do know, despite the fact that I've never seen a Bond movie. I've never seen one. No reason to watch them. You get the songs, that's enough. You get the songs, you get the ID, you see the trailer. <laughs> You're like, Bond was in some fucking trouble here, huh? Now, Lulu had a Bond song too, right? Like, I think she did Golden Gun or one of those. Golden like... Gun. <laughs> The man with the golden gun. He's <laughs> having fun. <laughs> His golden gun. <laughs> it's a folding gun. They're just like, Lulu, we like it. It just sounds like Goldfinger. Yeah. So we've already had a smash. She should have just done to spy with love. <laughs> <laughs> he can't work in this room. Every time he gets the opportunity to work in this room, he fucks the pooch. I I played the video game, <laughs> and I never heard this song. We got obsessed with that. Yes. <laughs> Bond? James Bond? 
James fucking Daily Bond. Do you remember what my nickname was that you and my brother gave me? What was that? Kill count one, because I would <laughs> usually only be able to kill once <laughs> in any game. They're like, oh, kill count one. You got your one kill. <laughs> Shut up, guys. I'll kill someone else. I know I will. Mm-mm. I saw this kid on uh, TV. I don't remember which show that he was playing so many video games that they had to take him off the grid. They took him out in the fucking woods. I watched that too, and I yeah. couldn't, I don't know why, I just, I clicked it on, and I, I kind of couldn't really turn away. But that's exactly what happened. They were just like, you know what? You can't be trusted. Just go out in the woods for a while. Just, like, I'll be the kid, and I'm playing a game, and you try to get me to do something. Hey, why don't we go outside Shut for... up, dick. Um, <laughs> that's how he was acting. <laughs> he was acting like he didn't have a care. He was a nerd, and he had two nerd parents. Yeah. And they're like... Well, we decided, you know, he's going to go on a wagon train until he's <laughs> good again. Please don't make me wagon train. <laughs> Let's move this wagon along. He hated it. And then at the end of it, he said he felt better that he did it. They always say that. Right. People are always proud to get out of rehab. They're like, I'm, best thing ever happened to me was doing, going to jail. <laughs> was it? So it doesn't fucking seem like that's it the best thing. Sounds so shitty. <laughs> yeah. Sounds awful. <laughs> I Today would, was a fast, crazy fast show. It was. I feel like we just sat down. I feel like we're on wagon train right now. You know what? Uh, Thursday, are we too busy to uh, bring back street jokes? We haven't done it in a while. I believe we're good to go. Yeah, we are, we are not too busy. I put together, you know, some prizes. Nice. Do that tonight. I'm sure you got some stuff put together yeah. just even recently. Yes. I have a I have a draft email that I can send you right after the show. Well, I'll send it to Gail and she'll tell me. No, I don't, I'll, I'll pass like on through you right. <laughs> don't believe you me. know what? Send it to Jen. Let Jen just <laughs> then I'll call him up and be like, Ron, I'm glad he didn't send it to you. This was a piece of shit email. <laughs> no, I, I mean you should have seen this fucking email. <laughs> I put together a good email. You know, next time leave that in your drafts. <laughs> Getting a little drafty in here, isn't it? <laughs> this fucking shitty email of yours. Draft email. It's a draft. A draft that should be on a raft. <laughs> out to sea. C is for cards. <laughs> like your country email you sent. This thing should went. <laughs> what? It's <laughs> not even grammatically correct. Doesn't need to be. <laughs> He's James Bond. <laughs> Double O seven's his name. <laughs> he won't get killed. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, when they're pitching. And this 007, it seems like he's going to get killed, but he won't. <laughs> and he hey, meets no a nice sp- girl, and then she tries to kill him, but she couldn't. <laughs> and then she got killed. <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> Oh, that's the thing with the Notre Dame grads uh, walked out during a Penn speech. Really? They, a big group of them all walked out? Enough for it to make the news. I believe it was over 100. Some people booed as they walked out. I'm like, why do you care if other people? First of all, I'd be happy if somebody walked out and moved up in line a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now I can see. This is great for a short person. By, like by the way, the <laughs> idea of a graduation is great, but the speaker just ruins it. Yeah. What the fuck's he speaking about? Stuff. Although I did have a cool, I did have a cool speaker. Who did you have? Tony Kushner. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He that was, was a, a pretty big surprise. Yeah, it was a cool one. I remember what Tony said: write plays mm-hmm. and make them gay. <laughs> the best, the sad. best, the best part of it is like I had one of the like smallest majors in that school. The fact that we were playwrights, it was just like a couple of us, and we were like, yeah. Yeah, it was just like a couple Yay! of us really excited. Well, the other kids are like, who's this dude? <laughs> what? Who spoke at your school, Chris? Uh, Chris Matthews. <laughs> Ridiculous, no? Hardball? Hardball, yeah, hardball was up there. That's a Hard weird boil. one. Yeah. Who spoke at yours? I don't remember whatsoever who spoke because it, I, since i went to just like an, i went to an art school so like it wasn't like they didn't bring in somebody for the film department it was just somebody generally in the art world yeah that's mine i'm sure it was somebody great yeah i don't of think course. i don't remember it being somebody too cool ask leslie you wouldn't know text you leslie and see if you get she me she doesn't remember you don't know any fucking fine artist you no. can't name one i can look up who was there though that's not the point the point is your own thing 
Now, <laughs> I didn't go to college, but I did go to high school, and the person speaking that day was the kid behind me. <laughs> <laughs> he just started saying shit in my ear. <laughs> We're done with this effed up place, right? <laughs> We're never coming back here again. You know, it's our time to get out there. <laughs> Experience the world a little bit. <laughs> Chill out, dude. We should start a band, man. A fucking band. <laughs> yeah, I know. I might with you. <laughs> we got to wrap this one up, though. God, what a crazy day. Super fast. You know, you try to get back in. It's a Monday. You're like, hey, I'll hang around for a while. Not today, you're not. Mm -mm. It's okay. over. You know, it was so fast because that Tom Papa's so damn funny. I know. I think that's what it is. We had a we had a blast with him, and he totally really took a liking to Vito, which was nice. And by the way, if anyone wants to check it out, the picture of Vito and Chris both up on our Instagram, which is at Bennington Show. Bennington S X M. Okay, don't listen to me again. S -X -M. Bennington S -X -M. S X M on Instagram to check out the boys and their tanks. I don't like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and Ron, Ron will be performing at Comedy Floor Cure, a St. Baldrick's benefit show with Dan Soder, Sherrod Small, Tim Dillon, Annie Letterman, Mark Norman, and more. That's tomorrow night at The Stand. 8 p.m. is when the show starts. Come out to see The Stand, and I'll make sure I show you Dan Soder's... What the hell's that? Oh, that's me. <laughs> My phone just started going. I'll make sure that I show you Dan Soder's belly button. <laughs> that's a cure for cancer promise. <laughs> Maybe I'll even have him clean his belly button. Uh, I'll bring a, qu a cotton swab and a little witch hazel. That's nice. Great idea, guys. Great idea. A little bit of witch hazel. Um, that's it for us. See you again. In 1974. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening! <laughs>